Hello and welcome to another Not Chilly podcast. Today I bring on my good friends Ian and Stu, and we talk about the film Predator. Now I feel this film is a really good introduction into bringing these two onto the podcast, because for them this film was just, like, gold. They probably watched it maybe five to ten times each, and every single time they watch it they have a good time, and they're always piecing together little bits and pieces that they hadn't seen before, and coming up with some awesome theories about why things happened and why things came together, and sharing their love for the hatred of other Predator films. So, sit back and enjoy, and thank you very much for being a part of this. Oh, sorry, I wasn't rolling. Were you guys at... Damn it, man. So, what are we talking about, guys? If that wasn't, like, the most obvious... We are talking about... I'm going to say top three. Die Hard. Die, that was Die Hard, wasn't it? It was Die Hard. It was, yeah. No, I'm going to say we're talking about Ian's, one of his top three films. Yeah, easily. Really? Yeah, man. Why is it your top three films? Why? Like, What puts that in that category? Uh, we're talking about The Predator, by the way. No, Predator. Yes, and obviously spoilers, I, if you haven't seen a movie from 30 years ago. Yeah, spoilers for the 82 classic, 86 classic? 87. 87 classic. Yeah, yeah. Spoilers one year after I was classic. born. This guy, Predator. 87 classic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I should also say that like we have Stu here and we have Ian here. Hey, guys. Two lovely, amazing people hey. with, with really delicious sounding voices, if you don't mind me saying. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Why, why is it in my top three? Yeah, why is it in your top three? Because it's a movie that you can come back to. It's a movie that every viewing yields something more. If you're me, maybe you'll come back to it and you'll be like, this is just as garbage as the first time. But for me, every single time I come back to Predator, there's something else about it. And it's just whack. And it's just fun. And it's just something that's fantastic. For why isn't like, Fight Club moment. about them? Mm-hmm. Like, why isn't Fight Club or something? Like a, a movie like Fight Club, which you can... Yeah. I like go back to it over and over again because there's so much like metaphor to it. Why isn't that like your top three? Why isn't compared that- to Predator? Is yeah. it all, all I'm talking? Well, no, I have a really hard time doing top lists of movies. Yeah, yeah. So if you ask the question, what's in there? I could spend three hours and still not give you the appropriate top ten for me. But Predator is just an easy clinch. Stu says it's in Ian's top three, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, it is. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, right. I couldn't name the other ones. And to compare it to Fight Club, I don't know. I don't think Fight Club you can rewatch quite as much. Really? I think it, like both of these movies turn on a twist. Mm-hmm. Fight Club and Predator, they have that in common. Mm-hmm. But whereas Fight Club ha- has such stakes to the twist and everything is dependent on the twist, mm-hmm. Predator isn't so much that. Mm-hmm. That there's more, there's more fleshy, there's more skin on the bones of Predator. Uh, yeah, okay. You guys? No, there isn't. There's more skin on the bones of the movie Predator than there is on Fight Club. There's more fantastic things around that central narrative structure that is in itself compelling. There's more uh, shiny bits and baubles on it, which mm-hmm. is why I'd say it's... Um, uh, high up in your ranking. Yeah, yeah, much higher up in my ranking. Yeah, I think yeah? On, on that coming back to it thing, like I think with something like Fight Club, that movie is entirely based around the plot in that... The cleverness is there for a rewatch, mm-hmm. but after after you've figured it out and you get that one or two rewatches of oh how cool is this that he's actually fighting himself in that scene or something like that. Yep. It, Predator on a plot level is just so much more simple. It it doesn't require you to be tricked or be uh, invested so much. It, it's just comes down to commandos versus alien. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and so. It, in a similar way to uh, John McTiernan's Die Hard, which he did the year after, uh, the plot doesn't get in the way of you discovering new things on different watches. Definitely. So this time, for me, looking at Dutch a little bit haunted from past missions isn't something I've not picked up before. I picture him in my head as very big and bravado kind mm. of character. And in this, he clearly doesn't want to get into these kind of combats until he does. <laughs> This is part of the fun of the movie, I think, with the performances in it. Arnold Schwarzenegger is being key and being unique in its uh, enthusiasm and inconsistency. Mm. So So many moments where we're like, 
Like he's in a helicopter and he's talking really like at a normal tone while everyone's yelling. Yeah. He's like talking to someone who's like 10, 15 meters away in a whisper. And then sometimes he yells like it's a really... Sometimes he's lost one of his colleagues and then laughs at a joke that he's made just 30 seconds later or five seconds later. Yeah. It's fantastic. So that like maybe it's maybe it's the um, the emerging talent of Arnold <laughs> in this movie that leads it to the reading that Stu's picked up this most recent time through in that maybe there's something actually wrong with him. And there's a line that hints towards it in the beginning as well. Mm. Once again, you watch it. how many times have you guys watched it? So whether it's... Oh, oh. it'd be in the... At least at least 10. Let's at say. least 10. Wow. And just now you picked up on this new, like another key. In just this. that I mean, I don't remember that line. So the line mm. that kind of tips me off is... Something that Dylan says Dylan, to him. Dylan says to him, I've missed this. Yeah. And Schwarzenegger's response is, you always were crazy. As in, you'd have to be crazy to miss this. Yep. We're going into this knowing we can die. Yep. I mean, that's what I read from it. This most recent reading of it. Regardless of what, how he was actually directed about it or what the actual script said. <laughs> I don't think there was any character direction. <laughs> Probably not. No. no, wait. There's a... Um... I think it's called If It Bleeds, We Can Kill It, or it's some other quote like that. There's a full 20-minute, 25-minute documentary about the making of if anyone's deeply, deeply interested in it. I think totally. I remember from the director, or maybe it was the producerial point of view, Alan Silver saying that he put Carl Weathers up against... Arnold Schwarzenegger because Carl Weathers had the chops, acting chops, to uh. elevate Arnold's performance. Yeah. But like, to, to, to go to Carl Weathers for your acting chops, I don't know, man. <laughs> Still, some of those scenes where they rub off against each other, they get into it and it gets kind of okay, Arnold's performance. Well, that's what I was about to say. I feel like it's his... It's, it's Arnold learning as he goes along the film and eventually he gets better and better at acting. Yeah, because, well, he's come from Conan the Barbarian and Commando before this. I don't know many others, but there weren't very many lines for him in either of those movies. For Certainly not any that required performance of a yeah. certain depth. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Amazing. All right, well, let's let's go through it. Like, I mean, obviously, the to the uninitiated, there's plenty... Like, everyone knows what it's kind of about, but let's... Let's just do like like your elevator pitch. You want a log line for Predator? Do you mean like a word for word of every single line of dialogue, <laughs> which I know you can do? Yeah. Um, no. Well, I mean, I guess there's only like, you know, probably 50 lines. Dylan, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> You're doing pretty well. That was pretty good. What's the matter, Dylan? CIA got you pushing too many pencils. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, no. All right. So but like, yeah, let's go. Let's go for elevator a pitch. A specialist the film. team of army men is dropped into an anonymous South American country to pick up or to extract some hostages who are supposed to be diplomats um, that have been taken by some... um, Militia? Generic militia or militant force. That's it. That's the elevator pitch. And then... And then... Shit gets real? People start dying in weird and mysterious ways. Yeah, that's it. But I don't know how to put that succinctly. Yeah, it, it's very <laughs> mysterious. Something is killing them. If only we hadn't seen a shot at the start of the film <laughs> yeah. with an alien spaceship heading towards Earth. Or maybe the, the title of the film. Yeah, that's true. But you don't know. That's part yeah, of the yeah, fun yeah, that's yeah. ambiguity because it does turn back and forth as the movie goes on. Who is the predator? Who is hunting who? Mm. Actually, the literally the tagline is uh, the hunter becomes the hunted. One of the taglines from um, the 90s. There would have been at least 10 taglines yeah, to that movie. You can't help it. Yeah, so a group of soldiers gets dropped in the shit um, thinking they're on a mission that turns out to be another mission. And then on top of that, there's a fucky alien crab monster who hunts them down would that be adequate yeah i think so i think that's a the, yeah that's yeah that's pretty much, much it is, yeah you put more thought into that than a lot of people would. <laughs> yeah no because he's actually selling the movie <laughs> i really am yeah uh, no you you pitched that more than anyone would have to fox or whoever made that movie oh no for sure well they didn't have the stan winston creature design if we're just jumping around the place part of the thing that makes the movie fantastic is the creature in the movie Mm. and they didn't have that until production had already started they had to ship in stan winston to come up with something because before that um they had uh, a famous gymnast um Uh, john claude van damme playing a kind of ninja dog monster (laughs) 
This yep. is amazing. Yeah. So, well, let's start it from like, I, I kind of like the idea of going sequentially because we're talking about a film which it hasn't yet to be replicated in its class when, when we're talking about sequels. Mm. And so it's, I feel like it needs, we need to break it down section by section to try to dissect why this film and why can it not be, or has it not yet been replaced by another version of the same film like Predators 3 or 4 or 5 or what are we up to, 7 now? Yeah, 7. 7, or, or why there are very few action films, not just Predator films or Alien films, but why there are a few action films that are anything like this. Mm. Yeah. I mean, for me, it starts off, it kicks off like very few action films do in that there is... Do you mean current action films or any action film? Any action film. There is eight lines of dialogue at the start of that film that tell you everything that's happening for the next hour. Yeah, it's really show, don't tell for that whole first period. They show you characters. Well, no, before that, there's a whole, um, like, of them just literally explaining to you. There's that word, I always forget it. It's uh, Exposition? Exposition. That whole scene where they walk into the thing and he's briefing him and he sees, like, the old CIA buddy and he's like... Yes, it's exposition. Stupid. Yes, it's a little on the nose. Yeah, it's okay, fine. A lot on the nose. Yeah. But it's really succinct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it over it's with tight. so quick. You guys flipped me on that because I was like... Originally, I'm like, oh, this is terrible exposition. And then you, what was the line you guys quoted when it's like... When you're talking about the relationship between... Like, it was a rescue mission thing and it's like... Yeah. I, yeah. There's that whole... Who, who are these guys? They're res- rescue experts, not killers. Yeah, and they say that in like two lines. And I'm like, that's actually pretty efficient. What do they have to do? Fly into this area, rescue these people. Yeah. Why do they have to do it? Because his former contact has recommended him for the job. And That's it. And then why is it weird? Yeah. Because he wants to go in with him. And that's not normal. I don't do that. And that's enough mm. of, a, of a little tease that mm. maybe there's something wrong. But at this point, that just doesn't matter. And no. as that's going on, you get these introductions to all of these characters. Mm. They have like seven key characters. This is the helicopter throughout. scene when they're flying in. Well, the helicopter scene, but also Dutch's interaction with Dylan. Dutch being Schwarzenegger and Dylan being Carl Weathers. Mm-hmm. Um, they tell you a little bit about their history in the way they interact. That they're mm. a little bit competitive. That there's a little bit something sus going on with Carl Weathers. He's I know I put a like little military bit of, man. And, yeah. yeah, I know I put a little bit of shit on Carl Weathers earlier, but he does do this fantastic stuff with his eyes that tells you that he's dodgy without telling Dutch's character that he's dodgy. Mm. Um, and that and Dutch's team are all introduced in this introductory helicopter scene where they're landing at this military installation and you have a sense of how they play off against each other already. And that just keeps growing and growing and strengthening and strengthening through the first 30 minutes of the movie. Mm. In every moment of montage or every moment of pause, there's something going on between these people. They are, in the most beautiful way, the most shallow characters. (laughs) characters <laughs> yeah definitely they are all defined by one or two things about them yeah uh which, which is great because it just means one they're easy to attach yourself to yep two they're easy to detach yourself to. <laughs> and and three nothing they do gets in the way of enjoying the movie there's no bit where um your samuel l jackson type from deep blue sea gives a 10 minute speech about eating people on a mountain when there was an avalanche only to then be eaten by a shark. Mm. There's no moments where everything gets derailed by someone's giving lines of dialogue to explain who they are. Yeah. Yeah. So the, so the, the, the exposition is succinct between um, Dutch and Dylan, but at the same time, all this visual stuff is going on so that like Hawkins doesn't have to say, well, I grew up in Brooklyn and I uh, am a bit blue and I read dirty magazines, blah, blah, blah. And um, Billy doesn't have to say, I don't know, I I walked through the trail of blah, blah, blah all on my own and scouted out such and such an animal and killed it and took Mm. it for myself. You know, he's a spooky hunter, preternatural dude from the way that the other people vibe off him and not a minute is wasted on it and not like not a line of dialogue is wasted on it either. Yeah, it's totally fair. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I don't write scripts, so you might have a better insight from the stuff that you've done, but it's almost like they've written this huge script that exists yep. that they get everyone to read and then they throw it out and write another one that doesn't have any of that in it. Yeah. So everyone still knows all that stuff. Yeah. But it doesn't exist on the screen. Yeah. So there's no huge dialogue of them saying, um, you know, uh, Jesse Ventura doesn't really get offended by not offering Billy the stuff because Billy's a badass and no one wants to cross Billy. That might have been somewhere. Yeah. 
but it's never on the screen. It's just in a yeah, look, a, fi- a three-second look. look. Mm. Yeah. Whereas I think so many films, especially action films now, they put that in there. Mm. Oh, Billy, he's a badass. Ugh. Oh, we don't want to cross that guy. Ugh. Oh, man, not Billy. On he, Jesse Ventura, the toughest guy here, but also he wouldn't cross Billy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah. And, yeah. and this film has none of that. And that's why it's, that's why you can watch it so many times in that each time you introduce to these characters, you might pick up something new, yep. but it's only from six seconds of footage yep. in a plane. You're right about the, uh, the shallowness of them at the same time. Like this, I think, spawned a whole lot of knockoffs and follow-ons, which certainly happened in the sequelizing of this, but also happened in other movies where characters are identified by the type of gun they have. You notice everyone on the squad has a different kind of gun and Mm. it's unique. And they also have a different outfit, which doesn't really make sense if you're this crack squad of rescue commandos. Mm. You'd want to have pretty consistent gear going on with a bit of customization, I'm sure. But like they have like these outlandishly big weapons, which aren't if you're there to rescue people, as Piot pointed out early in the movie, this is a bit on the nose. How do you carry a person when you're carrying a machine gun that's that big? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) When you're a helic carrying a helicopter-sized minigun. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's through a jungle. But, but it's or when a... only one of you has a grenade launcher for some reason. Yeah, yeah. You don't need any. He's just really good with grenades. It, 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 I mean, but that's the thing. None of it matters. None of it, right. it identifies them. Yeah, it identifies But none of it actually matters. It always makes it more fun. No, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous to break apart. But oh, of course. Like, at its worst, it relies on casual stereotypes. Like, oh, yeah. From different, um, these people are from different regions of America and they speak differently. And they yeah, have yeah. Different ethnic identities. But, um, yeah, at its best, it's a really simple device that lets you move on with the action. You just buy in and let's go. Let's move on to the next thing. Let's mm. get into the mission. Don't overthink it. Yeah. And, and there is that f- for all its entrance mm. and how easy it is to get into it. There is what kicks it off for me is always the most epic handshake of all time. <laughs> it, that just yeah. really gets you into that, okay, I know what film this the is. The bicep shake. Yeah. And at no point... Even when things get really quite grim for them later on, at no point does the tone really change. No. They keep it consistent. Yeah. And from that handshake, it's just that tone. I feel like there's like three points in this movie which could describe the film, and that's one of them. That handshake is like, yes, that's... If yeah. you were to sell three frames of this film and be like, okay, we're going to make a, like an hour and a half or two hour long movie. Yeah. What Frame one is that... God, what's it? I don't know. We'll get into the other frames as we go through the film because that's true. definitely one of the ones with the. Oh, yeah. Frame it's, two, Schwarzenegger just holding the gun, going. Aah! And the dude freaking out and shooting into the bushes. Yeah, yeah. That's like, that's got to be frame the two. Fuck the jungle scene. And then I guess the third one is probably the dude on. Um, was, his, was it Poncho? The guy that like, cuts himself on the bridge? Billy. That Billy? Billy? Yeah, sorry, Billy. On the, br- on the like, wood log. Yeah. I feel like that's three mm. to attract the predator. And I feel like. Solid. Yeah, and everything else is like adds to that amazing like cool. story but anyway yeah yeah so we we've, we've, so we've introduced to the characters and then we move on to them being and we don't them. care if like, from that point on was they're done we're good we understand them except for the interaction between because no no that, that's not even a character plot it's the dude um uh, who's the guy that keeps sneaking up and he says that line is like i'll cut you or i'll make you bleed oh if yeah you make a well, noise. They, there's tension Obviously. Yeah, but like, that's not a character thing. That's actually just a tension thing. That's just like... Well, no, it's part of the hook. If we're mm. talking about it in terms of how the Predator compares to other similar movies where the plot turns on one moment where it's like, oh, we think it's this kind of movie and then suddenly it's another. Mm. Piot, you were comparing it to From Dusk Till Dawn yeah. where it's a heist movie and then bang, all of a sudden it's like this crazy um, horror film, spaghetti mm. western mix. The Predator does the same thing. And part of fooling you into that tension where it goes from like, it starts off as a, just a regular commando eighties movie. And then bang, suddenly you're in a horror movie and a creature feature and this thing's uh, tracking you down. Part of that trick is that it, it has to have for the first part when it's a um, action film with a bit of tension, it has to completely sell you on that tension. And that tension comes from Carl Weathers evil agenda CIA guy versus Mm. this close knit, team of people who don't fully trust him and so they set that up in the scene yeah which i think is awesome i think bill dukes is not on with carl yep bill duke yeah Mm. Yeah, mac mac and dylan do not vibe early on Mm. which obviously you were saying like i mean we won't skip to that now but there's that whole 
you know, like change a character. Yeah, it goes a full arc. Every yeah. one of these, that's another one, that's another fantastic thing about the film is that all these people have full arcs. Except they for the should. ones that die straight away. Well, except for the ones that die straight away and except for the people who aren't people, they are plot devices. Yes. Um, except for the people who are plot devices, every one of the major team has kind of a full arc, um, which is just a fantastic thing. So I guess at this point we land at the, at the hostage base. And uh, this is that really hilarious moment where we try to get some acting out of Arnold Schwarzenegger when that one of the hostages gets shot, and then Arnold Schwarzenegger's like, like, like you can see he's uh, upset about the fact that this uh, he's failed his mission or he hasn't been able to get some of the hostages out. So I, I, like, that, that's my next starting point because I feel like there's a lot of storytelling there too. Well, it's funny because if I'd taken the lead, that's exactly where I would have gone on the next narrative jump for this. But there is a scene where they find a guy skinned. Oh, yeah. That I constantly forget about. Oh, my God. Like, I just did. And and there is, uh, which we'll come to a bit later, but it is a guy that uh, Dylan, Dylan knows. knows right? yeah. And feigns that he does lack of... Con- well, f- one, lies that he doesn't know him. And two, later on, feigns that this guy's death meant nothing to him. He's just a pawn. Mm. And that is part of his overall arc. But it's not even something you start to think about. And it's not something I was just thinking about until I realized you just skipped it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, again, coming back to the pre- like Predator, you would never remember that scene, really. No. But all of these scenes set up different character moments and mm. narrative arc moments for all these people. They're really rich if yeah. you go back and watch again. But and the yet point none of them matter. Yeah, yeah. Which is why they're great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah the point of that scene is to be like, ah, it's a shock. It's yeah, your first yeah, jump scare. Yeah. I think it's the only jump scare of the movie because there's some gross out stuff, but it's the only jump scare. Yeah. Billy's like, right. uh, is that the Ravens one? Yeah, that Where is Billy's the Ravens. Uh, vultures, the, yeah. The vultures. Yeah. Um, and it's he sent something wrong and he's gone through the tree and he's the big scary guy and he opens the vines and then boom, there's a corpse, a skinned corpse with dog tags on it. More mystery. Mm. Um and it's meant to layer in the predator, but on top of that, it does what Stuart. I think it about. also does like it because I mean, we talk about that you know Billy, who's mm-hmm. the guy who discovers them, and then he's that moment where he walks out in the middle and just freezes and he's freaking out and he touches his like obviously there's some kind of symbolic yeah, necklace that's that he's wearing, later. and then yeah, which is way later, but I feel like that's at that point is where what like he gets totally startled and he's and he's the kind of like I feel like he was the rock. At the beginning of the film, like uh-huh. people were like, "Yeah, this is the guy. This is our hunter. This is the thing." Yeah. And then suddenly, he's just like, "Oh my god, what the hell is?" Well, this? he's the only character that Dutch defers to. Yes, which is kind of important in an action eighties movie, where like you have one preternatural <laughs> superhero character that is capable of doing everything. In this case, Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm. and the fact that he's deferring to this other guy is kind of significant, which leads the audience to be like, "Oh, well, he's quite good. What's going on with that?" Yeah, yeah, and this is his. Be- this is the beginning of his real story arc, where yeah. he's like, th- "I'm now like changing as a person, as a character. I've gone from stoic and like confident to like I'm starting to lose my shit a little bit, yeah. just a- just a touch." And yeah. then obviously he keeps progressively. As you see it in shots, uh, progressively onwards from there, upwards until his death, where he like he spot he stops and he spots something or he sees something or he like does this and he's just slowly winding into madness. Part of the genius of the film. Mm that not a moment of B-roll is wasted. Yeah, you yeah. see Billy in the background doing this thing, or you see, I don't know, Mac with his razor going yeah. at it, or you see any number of these other... Like, everybody gets something to do action-wise. Every character is doing something in every scene, which adds to the richness of the picture. But the vultures? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the vultures is where, uh, I mean, the first time that Predator does what I love is immediately ask a question and then immediately answer it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it just a trope that these birds appear because birds fly off in scary moments no these are vultures and they're picking this dead body yeah there is a call and response they leave almost immediately point. every mm. time with this film <laughs> it's not spooky movie spooky birds Ooh, it's not atmospheric yeah, yeah. And, and if you didn't get it just from the quick shot of them you then see one later on on the ground still trying to get to the body even though they're sure. around it um and and it's great and it also sets up this thing with billy where you're not quite sure if he's maybe a bit supernaturally gifted yeah if he just can hear the bush i mean just thinking about it now maybe he just heard the birds yeah mm. and that's, that's what it might be that's how i Do they make reference to his sense of smell he could smell something because it's obviously he's freaked out because of his sense of smell. Which I'm sure if you'd notice later on. Is this 
Is this you bringing this to the movie on account of your <laughs> lack of smell? Is this <laughs> I mean, it might. I mean, but this is the thing. I, wish this, I, had that. I have a hard time unpacking this with the movie, whether I'm actually reading something new or I'm bringing something new to it. And that's why it's great. These yeah, characters yeah. are so simple. This guy is better than the other guys at figuring things out. Why is that? That's up to you to decide. Yeah, 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 maybe yeah. he heard the birds. Maybe he smelled the corpse. The blank slate. Maybe he is slightly supernatural and has a gift of reading the land or something like that. Mm. Well, everybody does have a gift, except for Hawkins. Yeah, that guy's... Yeah. He was, tells is, bad is he jokes. The, is, oh, that guy, yeah. He was the, there to be killed first. But, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and also to be kind of a, a self-insert for people watching. Because mm-hmm. he seemed like the, the weedy one of the bunch. The, the How one do you get into a commando group like ones. that? Yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's for the audience. Yeah, oh, totally, yeah. totally. <laughs> yeah. um, you don't, that's that's how. Mind you, oh, man. So, past the bird, do we talk about the assault on the rebel? Well, before we get to there, I just want to quickly touch on that, like, horrific... Uh, what, like The bird kicking? No, horrific, <laughs> like, sexism and, um, and like, uh, and homophobia. It's telling about the movie that I didn't know where you were going when you said touch on the horrific because there were a few options. <laughs> yeah, there is. And it's fine. Like, okay, I get it. It's a, it's a film of the time, but I, I can't I can't walk away from this without at least mentioning totally. that helicopter moment and, and that fair. joke that he keeps throwing in. Because but. I think regularly we're going to say how well this holds up compared yeah, yeah. to... Lots more films that come that are lots more sensitive. Can I? A lot more sensitive about these kind of things. And mm. there are a lot of moments in this that now seem quite unforgivable. Who wants mm. to take it on the chest and run through the line? Oh, I'm not going to do it. I'll do you it. can do it if you want. You wanted to. You're like, no, it's not it. that I want to. I think you it, ask the question. I don't and want you're to like, dance. I'm going to do it. <laughs> oh, well, we want people to know what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to dance course. around something with kid gloves and <laughs> pretend like it's not a thing. It's yeah. a thing. It's a thing that happened. You talk about it. You air the wound. You, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, you clean it up, you analyze Fine. it. Okay, I so Jesse the, the Body of Ventura, the most hyper-masculine of all these hyper-masculine the freaks one. in the, in the um, chopper on the way to the thing, is chewing, chewing tobacco and just generally being obnoxious, mm. deliberately hyper-masculine and obnoxious. Um, and he offers it around <clears throat> to these three or four people. Oh, God damn, I can't. Okay. And they refuse his chewing tobacco. And he says, what are you, a bunch of slack-jawed... Are you going to say it? I can't. Don't. F-word. F-word relating to homosexuals. Uh, Yeah, pejorative for homosexuals from the 80s. Yep. What are you, a bunch of slack-jawed F-word? This stuff will turn you into a sexual tyrannosaur. Yeah. So it's anachronistic and it's terrible. <laughs> it is. It's really terrible. Um, like that just actually totally punched me in the face. I did not expect that. <laughs> I expected like that the like, other dude who says the joke about like ladies' bits. Yeah. You know, and I was like, okay, that's all right, whatever. The you know, kind dude of the film, point whatever. of that joke was to show that he was on the nose and mm. he wasn't getting it right. And Billy's this stoic guy who doesn't either doesn't like his jokes or doesn't like him. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a contrast to those two characters, and it shows that that character Hawkins tells a joke about vaginas um Mm. is growing because he tells the joke again later and it gets a little bit better and um billy gets it and laughs because it's about echoes and it's about tracking and hunting when the original joke is about like turns on the same premise but it's different so billy doesn't get it Uh. so like all these things do derive from the character but they're just not (laughs) just not on third one if, if no one else has uh, another shitty and awkward thing yeah, what from was? Predator. There's quite a few. I mean, like, aside from that generic South American country stuff um, and these righteous dudes invading to take care of this menace. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yes. Aside from that, um, and aside from Billy being, like, kind of a mystical Negro, like, he has all mm. these magic powers that he can tap into because of who he is, but then each of the characters has something like that. So, it's 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 still bad, but everyone gets a similar treatment um is the kicking the birds <laughs> oh my god yes a live bird it was uh, like th- that there's no special effects there oh shizen i, I wonder i oh. wonder if the bird was meant to move in his head when he you know kicked down at it and it just it just no, didn't. I don't think the bird was wasn't supposed to do anything and then the, the bird was like hey either. on this take kick the fucker <laughs> <laughs> that's 
like, Maybe. <laughs> that's what it felt like to me. I really hope that wasn't the case, but oh my God. So at the end of the buzzard scene, um, when we <sighs> find out that someone's been skinned alive, they, they're like cleaning off the scene um, and getting the dog tags and things and someone kicks one of the buzzards out of the way. And it's mm. anonymous. It's an anonymous boot that kicks this bird. But in the moment, Piot just had a... Ah! I mean, it, it's not. Yeah. It's Poncho. Rightly so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't out him. Sorry, Poncho. <laughs> <laughs> that was y- just... You are my second favorite character in that movie. <laughs> so. Like, that's so... No- that the, the How lax they were about showing that is a testament of how lax they probably were about killing nature when they were there. Well, it was kind of the reason for shooting in Mexico, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lax away from people. There were really lax... Um, there are a few incidents with stunts and there are a few incidents with um, crew um, mm. getting injured in the making of it. So it's kind of like... A- yeah, we go here to do things away from uh, prying and, eyes and supervision. Yeah. Mm, oh my god. Yeah, you brought it. That was that was the other one that like I think I shut that out of my memory because it was that, that was another like oh my god, what the. <laughs> it is quite shocking. It is. It, it, you it, wouldn't it, see that in today's thing unless it was a digital animal or like it was like a CGI animal or something. You know. It, it it's telling to bring it back to why we're talking about these things that these moments show up so strongly. Yeah, mm. because the rest of it is quite timeless in a way. Yep. Mm. Sure, I'm sure the technology and the guns and everything are dated to X period, but not really. Mm. No, no, you're right. It's a. It could still happen now if you shot that exact same movie now. Yeah. It would just be minus a few, uh, pretty shitty moments. Yeah, yeah, totally. And the thing is, I, I mean, I don't, I don't condone that behavior, but I think that's part of what. That attitude to filmmaking on that film is part of the reason why it also worked. It was mm. the we don't care, let's just do it. Like, do it- you want to get talking about the the raid on the guerrilla camp? There we go. I was trying to find the appropriate word for it. The raid on the militant well, guerrilla camp. That just the US before that, like, because like, because I think that all the all that horrible swearing and like and the horrible jokes and the way that the people use words in the kicking of the bird, like I was saying, is 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 for me it. it I don't agree with anyone doing that, but I do feel like the movie worked better because I don't think people cared as much. Mm. And if people cared more, then it might... Like like with all the other Predator movies... It might onwards. have been more sanitized or it might have been... Yeah, I mean, you real. could easily... Like, you should have gotten rid of those jokes. You should have gotten rid of that horrible treatment of animals. Uh, totally, but... Uh, but What it's... else might you have gotten rid of? Y- yeah, like, it, it, like, I feel like... Uh, I, I hate saying it because I don't agree with it at all, but I but I really believe that there's something to do with that attitude. Uh-huh. That was just like, oh fuck it, yeah, just do it, whatever. Who gives a shit? Oh yeah, it's a bro thing. Like don't worry, like don't. And 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 some of the gold and the kind of, it's like if I were to get a bunch of gym junkies that just had no care about any other human, like psychopath gym junkies, and you put them out <laughs> into the world and just watch them. It's kind of like this that's so hot- close to what's actually happening, right? <laughs> Because it's like a bunch of stars, well, not stars, pre-stars and proto-stars yeah, in yeah. the 80s. And there's a whole star culture around Hollywood there, at the time right? with people being bigger than life. Yeah. And everyone's egos rubbing up against each other. I was going to save this for later, but uh, it's fine. Um, one of the uh, actors that plays one of our main seven mm-hmm. uh, specialist characters needed security guards around him at all times. <laughs> In order to keep him from hurting other people. What? Really? <laughs> in order to stop him from getting into fights. Can, can in- I guess? Yeah, yeah, guess. Was it Billy? It was Billy. It was Billy. It was How did Billy. You guess Billy. Look Size at this guy. Him. He's a monster. That guy's intense as hell. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I thought he was. Oh, like- I mean, it was probably that depth of acting that fooled you. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that wooden planks. Thing. That guy must be crazy. Yeah, no. So oh, they wouldn't geez. ensure him to come down to Mexico and do the thing unless security guards went out with him at night. Not like in a... Oh, because he would get drunk and then rowdy and then... Whatever. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah, and Jesse the Body Ventura has a bit of form in that front as well. Oh, so, oh my God. So it's like... And, and these guys were, were constantly one-upping each other, right? Yeah, there was that the gym. vibe around it. So wait, Billy was the guy who got, dies on the bridge, right? On the, yeah. on the yeah. bog. The, the I wonder if there was a that story behind American. that because they, they never showed the fight. I wonder if they were like, well, he actually got into a fight and they had to, he got arrested. So we're not going to show him until he comes back and then no, weeks that, later. That moment is too class to have not been written in the structure of the thing. Yeah, like right. in the structure of the way these people died. But I like that thinking. Yeah, yeah. this is the beauty of not having any context. Yeah. Is that like, we can speculate. No, exactly. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that was intentional. It, it's meant to be this big mano a mano on a wooden mm. log mm. across a bridge where mm. there is no... And you think about it, and this is where I keep coming back to questions that get immediately answered in yeah. my head. Why does he stop there on a probably not sure-footed log to try and take on the predator? Oh, it's because this guy has been getting around them in the jungle constantly. Yeah, this is the friend. only place he can take him on directly from the front. Billy's been reading that Sun Tzu. Yeah. And it, then it makes sense. Oh, he's fighting in this dumb place because at least the predator is equally... On sure footing with him, on the same yeah. plane. Mm. And it, it primes you and you see the shot of the predator's thermal vision rise up and you see Billy there standing, holding the knife. And then it robs you of that. Yeah. Mm. Which because is, the film knows you're going to get it yep. with Schwarzenegger later on. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Don't sell the moment too early. But it robs you of this moment. I think that's part of the uh, the intentional building of Billy's character is that if the predator can take Billy on mano a mano, what else can he do? Because that whole portion of the film is like one by one they're whittled down, even up. So two, we're jumping ahead a bit. It's fine. But two people get killed, and then the predators. Um, chasing them down they're like we've had enough we're gonna fight back and it's this really like swell of music and they get to it with the um building montage and you think maybe they'll have a chance of defeating this creature mm. and they can't yeah and all of that loads into the final act which is schwarzenegger going mano a mano with this alien anyway we can jump yeah, back yeah. To, so we can jump back gorilla to gorilla camp like, now finally sorry yeah no, no, i detoured fine. us like mad but no, let's go good. gorilla camp i like that detour about um the big personalities involved mm-hmm. in front of the lens, let alone behind the lens. Do you, do you want to talk about that training stuff that was going on with the cast before we, cause it, it kind of segues into, cause the moment, the moment at the gorilla camp, uh, you get to see each of these characters more in their element. Mm-hmm. Like the way that they fight defines who they are and what yeah. they do defines who they are. Yeah. So. And, and so, I mean, these guys are constantly on set trying to, one up each other on how macho they are mm. you know jesse ventura is getting to the gym at 3 a.m in the morning and according to reports pouring water over himself so that when schwarzenegger schwarzenegger gets there at 4 a.m he yeah. looks like he's been working out for hours <laughs> completely drenched in sweat so then schwarzenegger starts getting there at 3 a.m to work out just as hard yeah. and, and carl weathers i listened to an interview with him saying <laughs> he would work out at night so that none of them could see how much he was lifting. Yep. He didn't want to see how much they were lifting. <laughs> and awesome. um, is... there was a thing where they had a bicep measuring contest. <laughs> really? And, you know, according to Carl Weathers, this happened. Um, and Schwarzenegger got the costume department to measure his bicep and he got them to measure Ventura's and lie to Ventura and say it was bigger. Oh, my... So Ventura bet him that his was bigger and lost. <laughs> You know, and, and through all this competitiveness, there is a camaraderie that I think <laughs> oh, yeah. comes out of it where you can see in their characters, they are competitive with each other. They don't go around like Legolas and Gimli in that mm. fight scene counting kills. Yep. But there is certainly this thing of they see one guy getting in there doing something, they've got to get in and do something bigger and better. Yeah. Mm. They almost that- seem upset, like to, to go into that gorilla fight scene, they almost seem upset when when Schwarzenegger doesn't just blow up the fuel tanks, but then dislodges this truck and then throws it in. I feel like part of it's not, what are these you doing? Part of it's like, no, he's going to do something even bigger. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can see that now that you talk about the competitiveness. Yeah, it, it's in there. It's in. Yeah, um, yeah I was going to say, even if you like uh, ahead of you telling me this, I could kind of intuitively understand that that was what was going on behind the scenes. You could kind of tell from people's interactions with one another just on screen. Yeah, mm. and, and they kind of been great um, conditions to film in. <laughs> uh, no. And yet this well, kind of bravado probably brought them through it, right? The director, John McTiernan, said, quote, The first day of shooting was the worst nightmare I've ever seen. <laughs> Oh, good. Well, I I assume it got better from there. Um, Somewhat. Um, Yeah, the cast and crew dealt with extreme heat in the jungle and serious illnesses brought on by eating and drinking contaminated food and water. It's on account of Predator that now when um, big Hollywood budget movies go overseas to on location, they get their catering companies to take over a local business or something Mm. like that because everyone was just eating whatever was around and they clearly weren't acclimatized to it. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's amazing. So, the assault on the gorilla base. I, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... It's when you start seeing the traits in that 
Dutch is trying to do the most direct route possible. And, and this is maybe reading into it, but he's trying to do the most damage possible to have the least amount of conflict. Yep. You see Jesse Ventura underestimating people. He gets shot a couple of times just walking out in the open. And also carries it off like it's no big deal. Like it's no big deal. Yeah. Shrugs off. Uh, you see uh, Poncho using their grenade launcher. <laughs> and you see... Um, Dylan running in, trying to be like everyone else, trying mm. to match the bravado. And not quite being there. And not quite being there. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a testament to that first scene with the arms together. Exactly. You know, like, the, well, that's how I should probably describe it, but it's the, like, the arm wrestle. That the most the epic beginning. handshake Yeah, all that's time. right. Yeah. The bicep handshake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone's yeah. seen the gift. The bicep shake. <laughs> yeah. You know, Basically. I, I never saw it that way, but, like... Yeah, I think that's an interesting like I like I love reading into how action is a form of storytelling, mm. and people always underestimate that. It's like oh, they're just shooting at each other. It's like no, 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 but they're all shooting differently. They all have different stories. Mm. They all use different weapons. They all fight in a particular way. You know, they all have, and that's because they come from different backgrounds. And and this is their moment. You know, it's real. It's good. I like this. And you and you want to talk about using some of those unfortunate moments. Let's mm. say. Um, to define character mm. and you've got Hawkins telling the joke early on before they've even gone in the mission. Mm-hmm. They go in and slaughter hundreds of these guys. Mm. And then Hawkins tells another joke, like nothing has changed for them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, you can read into that if you want. And look, that's their mindset. Yeah. Actually one of my favorite points in that film happens in that. And that's when, when he, when uh, I don't know, I always forget the character's names, but it's the, the, the dude with the heavy machine gun that gets shot. Jesse, the body Ventura. And this is obviously that famous line where he's like, you know, you're, you're, you're bleeding. It's like, I don't have time to bleed. I don't got time to bleed. And in the reaction of the other guy, if it wasn't that, it wouldn't have been perfect. Oh, uh, this is line. He's, okay. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. I think I think he was like, "Yeah, man," then that would have been the worst. But it's so good that he doesn't do that. Undercuts it. Yeah. Going. And then followed up from when he shoots his grenade launcher up into the hill. He goes, "You got time to duck?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perfect. And then the rubble comes down and hits Jesse Ventura. Mm. And for shadows, Jesse Ventura is dismissing of something. Yep. Because he's so tough. Without paying attention to it. Which comes back to the yeah. the the thing, the movie being like a paragon of fucked up Hollywood 80s masculinity, but also self-satirizing, which I don't yeah. think we have enough time. Blaine is his name, by Blaine. the way. Blaine. It's Blaine. Nice. I'm pr- no, I'm pretty sure it was just Jesse the Body Ventura being method and being himself in every single moment. <laughs> but the, picking up on the Hawkins joke and picking up on the like awkward tonality between murder and a bunch of dudes and then just laughing about it, which exists in many of these action movies, but it's not as visceral in these other ones as it is in Predator, I think. Um, the <laughs> the classic Arnie lines. You need mm. Arnie lines in any movie that Arnie, Arnie's in. Oh, so yeah. like turning around and throwing the knife at somebody. Yeah, and it yeah, goes yeah. through them and into the wall. Do you get this feeling that Stick like... Stick around. They didn't like... There's a, I love that line so much, but I feel like... <laughs> They they were like shooting the movie. They kind of like got halfway through the the like this this production. Like oh my god, we didn't do any of those lines. Shit. All right. Um, this moment and this moment. Do it. They'll cut it. They'll make it work. And- so an interesting thing about that machete scene, mm. oh, which yes. I read, oh, yes. was that the machete was annoyingly heavy to carry. Oh my god. And so that scene, not with the dialogue, but that scene was done so they could get rid of the machete. That's oh my gosh. Amazing. That they didn't have to That's carry fantastic. it again. Uh, because you see Billy carrying a a version of one. Yep. Later on. Yeah. Uh, but he's got to keep his. He's got to a have long that kind special of, ceremonial. Have life. that kind of fight. Mm. But it's funny that, you know, these now iconic moments made up more iconic by the line. Yeah. But come from La- laziness or no grounded in functional necessity. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Like these guys are slumping through the jungle. But yeah, it's, um, a, it's, a, it's a great line. And it, is it the only? No, there's one either right before it or right after. Right it. after that. Do you know what it is? Uh, I know what it is. Uh, I really want to know. No, I like I really want to. Like he kicks down the door, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he says, "Knock, knock." Yeah, straight after. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, and it's and it's funny that I mean he has so many iconic lines from this film, but yep. none are delivered with that kind of cheekiness. That there's no blows. wink in them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we all think about if it bleeds, we can kill it. Get to the chopper. Those but are they are contextually appropriate. Yep. In yeah, those yeah. moments, as opposed to say Batman and Robin. As opposed to those first two of knock knock and yep. I mean okay, they, they fit what's actually happening, yep. but 
the tone is a little bit yeah. Schwarzenegger, yep. and I feel like this might have been studio compromise, maybe? For sure. We need to show Schwarzenegger doing Schwarzenegger stuff that he did in Commando. Well, a note on that um, is that I read that Shane Black, who plays Hawkins, mm-hmm. my boy, um, he was kept on board or kept around because he's not a star. He's not a particularly good actor, but he was kept around in order to punch up the script on the go. Oh. Yeah. A bit of an improviser. Well, no, not like, not in a Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, other guys uh, sit around and make up lines all day kind of way, just in a revise the script as it goes, as oh. a, a righty kind of thing, not as a um, perform a thousand your mama jokes. Yeah, until yeah. Until you get the right take. Kind yeah. Of way. All right. That's super interesting. Right? So many. So much of this movie uh, behind the camera, the production side of things was improvised on the go or just kind of came together and nearly didn't come together. Um, which like is part of the fantastic puzzle of why it was so simple or how it comes across so simply and succinctly and how they set up and paid off all these things. Um, like another note from behind the camera and while we're talking about this one fantastic action piece because of the structure of the movie and because they fool you into thinking it's an action thriller at the beginning and then it pays off as something else, they get to spend all their hard-earned cash on stunts in this one scene that makes it fantastic. This guerrilla raid goes on forever and it has so many explosions. Yeah, it, yeah. When, when they um, he, he crawls up to the little uh, viewing area, where, you know, the cliff where he crawls up to it and he looks and there's about two houses when he mm. looks at it from up there. Mm. And they blow up at least six or seven shacks. <laughs> Like, it is absolutely ridiculous. So they say- In the best way. Yeah. yeah They've yeah. just given up uh, pretending that it's a tiny... I mean, how many hostages could have been in any of those, any of those shacks? And I know how that- did they not check? I know there's only two hostages. Yeah. One has been shot. Yeah. Where's the other one? Yeah, yeah. I mean... There it is. And, and it's just so beautiful in that it stops caring... Yeah, in that moment. Because it knows everyone else doesn't care either. Yeah. yeah. And probably. these guys have carried all this weaponry and we're going to get to see him use it and it's going to be great. Yeah. And there's one-liners and, it's, and it, it, is, it is a different movie. Yeah. I mean, it, they manage to get a tone almost the whole way through uh-huh. quite consistent, but that scene is kind of out of place. Yeah. From the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's also an important scene because it shows that they're capable. For sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it shows you character and it gives you that twist where it like, it gives you the payoff of that narrative through line, mm. which is uh, Carl Weathers being um, a spy and them not being really the, the super action extraction team who are kind of noble because they only do this to save people. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, they find out that they've been lied to and that they're not there to save hostages that Carl Weathers needs these um, this intel about this group and that makes it all worthwhile the they CIA. were planning an attack on the border can't trust CIA them. cover up yeah can't trust the CIA classic CIA but I'd love to do um, this podcast with I've told you guys the story before one of the first features I boom operated on the DOP mm. was a guy called Rob Aganis I'm not mm-hmm. saying that wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was the first assistant camera and steady cam operator on Predator. Oh shoot! Yeah, yeah. I was just Damn. yeah. So I was just, good like, lord. I, yeah, I remember well, telling stories about that. We, and we're talking about the focus pulling being really good and stuff like that. It was. There, really there, there's some. Yeah. I'd love to hear yeah. have him in the same circle to be like, okay, tell us what happened. And, and there, there were some great shots in this film. Yeah, but yeah. none of them like really stick with me beyond yeah. say the last you know, the next few hours after watching. Mm. I, don't, I don't... When I think about why Predator is great, I never think Just some of these shots are in it are great. And yet... But if those weren't foundationally capable mm. shots, yeah. which they were and which they are, they don't have much to work with. It's just a character in front of a field of green. Mm. There's, like, not much new and exciting stuff aside from these action set Very pieces. functional. So. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah, it and works, there's, there's so. that recurring thing of uh, the character in question, be it Billy or Dutch or any of the characters, are always to the right or to the left. Left, mm. and and the jungle is in the center and it is almost this character they're shooting i mean i'm sure that is what they were going for but an interesting Ooh. point to make oh sorry sorry did i cut you off oh uh, i was just saying i'm sure that is what they were going for and that they wanted the jungle to be front and center it's not because you don't know what's in there but it's not 
Mm. Again, because they know what movie they're making and why it's so great, they can do all this stuff. They can be really creative with some of their shots. They can do these beautiful tracking shots. They can do these shots that start slow, panning up, get past the character, speed up to where blood is, slow Boom. down, yeah. speed up again to where the alien is or whatever it is at that point. And they can screw around with it and, and be really creative and really good, mm. knowing it's not important on a, we have to have real great shots. We're, we're not uh, shooting the revenant here. Mm. Well, I, that, you was, know. that was kind of my point to, to jump on that, is that I was watching uh, another podcast episode that's going to come out soon for Jarhead. Uh, you know, that you guys like look back and find that. You guys can listen to it too when it comes out, which will probably be this week or next week. Um, I can't wait. Uh, uh, humble brag. Um, but we'll, it was uh, just a brag. In that film, <laughs> in that film um, it was shot by uh, Roger Deakins, mm -hmm. and he's known for being like one of the best uh, cinematographers, DOPs in, yep. in, the, in the world. Yep. But whenever you watch one of his work, like w w like his works are so incredibly functional, and they're so they're only flashy at times, mm -hmm. and they're functional ninety percent of the way. Yep. And I feel like that's the same thing for Predator. It's like this, the reason why we don't walk away going, "Oh my god, those shots!" was because it was it was well executed visually, and we didn't it, nothing distracted us from the way it was shot. Heck so it yes. was shot well, it told the story really well, and then occasionally there was a cool like you know like things going off. In in the background and well lit kind of like everything's wide. functional yeah well it did uh, the and, and you're saying even the b-roll none of it's wasted everything is showing mm. something whether it be part of the jungle alive whether it be the size of the jungle whether it be you know just the boots from the fact that we don't need to see them to know they're struggling through this terrain mm. like there's no other than I think the first shot uh, the last shot sorry of mm. lingering on a helicopter yeah there's nothing that really seems to go too long or yeah. or, um, or be out of place mm -hmm. yes. in that you don't notice how how good this is. Yeah, Te like technically excellent. Mm -hmm. Would that be yeah. an accurate description? None, none of it seems like a wank. No, like you wouldn't yeah. say, oh, the cinematography is fantastic Yeah. if someone said, why do you like Predator? Yeah. Like, no, but no, it no. is, it's great. It is. And it's solid. Yeah, yeah. For I mean, the, the, that taken away from the sound recording, which I think was either non-existent <laughs> or, or yeah. mostly. If, if it wasn't all ADR, it was mostly. And if it wasn't mostly, then that... It's really remarkable. I mean, yeah, I, it was. I was didn't sound good, that's for sure. But like, it was certainly functional. I imagine that would have been quite difficult. Oh yeah, yeah. High humidity, rustling leaves, rustling really. leaves. Yeah, you would have to. In order to make that sound good, you'd have to have like swept the floor and those close-ups and all this other business. And they they already had to cut down some of the jungle. Is was something yeah, again yeah. that I've read or seen in documentary somewhere. In mm. that you had no sense of depth back to old boy Deacons and being just accomplished and and um, being very technically correct and being very lean um, with his shots. Mm. selecting things very deliberately is that like i don't know who production assistants people working on the film had to go out and clear spaces of jungle for people to work in for the main action to take place in the foreground with characters doing their business but then they also had to clear stuff out paths in the background so that there was depth because mm. where they were shooting it was just blanket green background you might as well have, it's almost literally a green screen but made of textured um mm. plant life and plant material but it is a really like lean picture mm -hmm. from the Deacons ish shot selection to the fantastic writing, to the brevity, to the character development, to the masculine bodies. It's all very lean and tight and muscular. Right? <laughs> I'll allow it. That was, that was, that was, that was <laughs> all right. I'm you okay got there. Yeah. You got there. Uh, uh, there's a, there's I mean, a joke it, in there somewhere. It, I mean, it, it's, it's a lean <laughs> film. And I like the you, joke I told. You, you can spend 20 minutes talking about the cinematography and someone might say, uh, nah, I just watch it for them, like the cool scenes and all the stuff. And that's just as fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, while we're on that uh, and being technically accomplished and picking the bits, one of the heroes of it is the um, the stunts and the stunt coordination, I think. Mm. Um the the dude who was the stunt supervisor or the lead stunt guy, I don't know what that title was, um, went on to direct Predator 2. So the stunt guy directed the second movie. Which yeah. explains a bit. Um, but then he also went on to direct... Doesn't explain a, a why he hired Danny Glover. No. 
I don't think I think that was someone okay. Else's. Yeah, he probably didn't. Yeah. yeah. Um, also went on to direct um, Action Jackson, starring Carl, Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers, yeah. It's a yeah. fantastic. Oh yeah, film. all this whole In this industry is about who you know. Like it's, it's a real cottage uh, group of folks. And, and you're gonna you're gonna work and stuff. What was the the actress's name? Ah oh, man, there's an actress that people talk about. It might have been no, it wasn't Renee Zellweger. Maybe it was. It was like it was one of the ones that do a lot of those kind of um, Proud of the movies. No, no, no. Those kind of films which are like oh they're just like love stories or whatever uh-huh. like really generic uh-huh. stuff and i was listening to um a director talk about working with this actress and go the reason why she's amazing is she's just brilliant at like the functional form of filmmaking mm. so she hits her marks she says her lines mm. she does exactly what you needed to do and then she walks out like sure she's not doing award-winning like you know oscars films and stuff like that but she is a working and a constantly working actress because she's just good and people like working with her and i imagine that when you start fu- like circling circling yourself around a group of people that you like regardless if they might have some shortcomings in their acting you keep them together because you're like i like working with these guys the guy's a nice dude but you, you know i mean thing. tom cruise is gonna be the best example of that right yeah like, right e- the business. everyone talks about how damn hard he works on a set mm. Mm. how much he throws himself into it and mm. when you've got someone around that much around like that it must be easier to make a film for sure someone that enthusiastic about it yeah i'm just trying to look up the stunt coordinator oh the stunt team yeah no uh the guy who did it again uh third generation in a stunt family Mm -hmm. really involved i don't i don't have particulars i wish i did that's fine i'm just i'm the one looking it up grand um so while you're doing that uh, yeah anything else from behind the scenes around this um massive massively choreographed um raid on the gorilla base that stood out to you there's segueing in from stunts there's not a huge amount in this film. No. There's a lot of scenes of them kind of standing and delivering. Mm. Uh, later on, there's a couple of Schwarzenegger, yeah. you know, falling from the jungle into the water, going over cliff edges. But there's not a huge amount of any of them really exerting themselves in any sort of <laughs> diving or... Well, wh- whomever anonymously played the Predator while it was disguised. Oh, in Predator, a- definitely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, none of the actual cast, you know, thinking back, I don't see any of them uh, running and diving over something as it explodes. Yeah. Or it's all very, shoot them. Yeah. Uh, and you brought this up when we were watching it. Shoot them, then there's a scene of something oh, exploding. and yeah. Something you don't see nearly enough of. I, I'm all for the John Wick kind of action and the Raid kind of action um, and incorporating all of these stunts into the one moment and that hectic kind of um, uh, Netflix is one daredevil kind of action that we get today. That's like primo stuff. Mm. But this is a kind of action, um, uh, a, a way of shooting and construction, <laughs> constructing action action that we don't get so much which is like shoot the gun going off and then just cut to an explosion or cut to dudes falling over and it, it doesn't need to make contextual sense because you're only getting split seconds of each but it's a really excellent these guys do it really excellently this moment is really excellent yeah i mean it's, it's like a, a word with some of the letters missing you can still piece together what <laughs> yes. is happening yeah that's kind of the that's kind of the trick of film as it has existed since forever is you squash two pictures together and the viewer makes up the meaning in between those two pictures which is the this kind of um, A-teaming it is what I'd call it because the A-team did yeah, it for I mean, Speaking got- of the word A-team the, the, the stunt coordinator uh, that was his last film as a stunt coordinator and then he, on a high I guess then he started like you described he started directing Yeah. He, and the first thing he directed according to this was the A-team no TV show I can't see um, the next Predator film on here oh. but it might have might have either been uncredited or maybe he was assisting directing or something um, but the A-team comes up for First, and then he directed until I mean I'm sure if he kept doing things but it looks like he directed until yeah 2011 Human Target one episode that was a TV series yeah, I think he seems to d- dive straight into TV series because all his stuff seems to be yeah other than Sniper 2 it's like a video <laughs> classic uh, yeah, I don't think I don't. Yeah. Anyway, so that's just interesting that like that was his last. Maybe he just was sick of the jungle. <laughs> I mean, thinking about that, like you think these guys are badass soldiers, mm. but when do you actually see them do anything other than fire? Yeah. Mm. Like Schwarzenegger gets a bit to do, and we know he's physically capable. Mm-hmm. But these other guys, like like Jesse the Body Ventura, is got to weigh how much? Like how how long does it take to, for that guy to get up to speed? <laughs> <laughs> like how long would it take for him About to actually get as long get as move? old painless yeah I mean exactly does he need a wind up of, yeah. of a few seconds and you don't ever see him diving or whatever you don't even see him you kind of see him get shot a little bit yeah. and then they rely on another scene later to tell you that he's shot yeah mm. they don't do that much for these big action bravado guys it's all about how they look oh totally which is a big a big 80s thing yeah yeah, yeah zero yeah. technical all about you know the, the sexy body 
Yeah. Or the manly body. But I mean, I if you don't see the stunts, mm. you can't really pick apart how bad or good they might be. Yeah. If they're not yeah. there, you can't really criticize them. And you know what? Going back onto what I'm not sure if you guys covered this in just a little while ago, but it's going back to that function. It's like, do we need to show it? Did was it was it lacking because we didn't see them performing these big stunts? No. Not at all. Not at all. So like why do it? Why risk the actors? Why worry this the, the, you know, like no, just shoot it. Yeah. Shoot around it if you have to. And if it works, great. Awesome. Moving on. And clearly it did. Yeah. I d I didn't even think about those things until you kind of bring them up i did think of it a little bit but not massively mm. um should we move on to the next yeah, sure. we're, we're not we're like so we're still in we haven't seen the predator yet <laughs> the rest of it is kind of simple because the build is like you're building all these characters yeah. and you're seeing how they work and what they do and then it kind of follows in quick succession so like after this big action set piece after the raid on the gorilla base they the narrative turn happens with carl weathers character um it's revealed that he's a cia spook that is is actually not here to rescue people. He's <gasps> here to get information for the government. Oh no! And to kill a a very well armed bunch of and to kill a very well armed bunch gorilla of gorillas fighters on, on the border. Um, and Dutch has a problem with this, and we re- resolve that conflict in a way, though it continues. Um, shortly after they the movie gives up the pretense of this being a regular kind of action movie. Um, and then it moves into kind of this horror terror creature feature, and that starts with a kind of reveal of the predator yeah which is which is for anyone else interested in timing 53 minutes into the film before yeah. we get a first look. look but he's already done his action like yeah. he, he's he, we've seen him kill at that point because that's where he kills his first person do with the glasses yeah that is n- and then, no, and then that leaves and he gets shot doesn't he 53 minutes is when we see the first other than the the, the thermal vision it's the first time we see any sort of physical outline oh really invisible yeah. otherwise i thought that the was the first time we saw him he's actual without the invisibility this is the suit. scorpion moment when he picks up the scorpion uh i th- no i think it was after that when okay. we physically see it's when he's patching himself up that's what i thought i thought that was the first time we saw him he's been hit the first time and then it's it, you, and you only see his hands and that's that's the first time you actually see him without the invisibility suit but you've seen him without the invisible we've seen him invisible plenty of times yes but you never actually see his skin or his like look okay in, in that's what i thought we're jumping ahead a little bit then yeah we'll pair well, it back to well so so they pick up a the only surviving gorilla who have from the base lady mm-hmm. anna is her name and uh yeah, of course and she's got to be the trophy that they need to save you got to have one of those things in these films. well no the only reason dutch wants to kill her or let her go he doesn't specifically say mm. he wants to cut her loose the only reason she stays is because dylan wants information from her uh, yeah right. and so Dutch says to him, she's your liability. If you get stuck behind, you're left behind. Yeah, yeah. So the only reason she's in it is because he wants intel because they can't find any in the camp. Mm-hmm. Or they don't find it, or it's not good enough. Or yeah. yeah, he he wants because they blew he it want, all he up. He wants to take her back and torture her, classic CIA yeah. style. <laughs> they blew it all up. Couldn't he? Couldn't you know, the, she's not gonna. She's. It's not gonna go well for her. Couldn't he go back at him and be like, "Oh yeah, you you know, you, it's your responsibility." It's like you just ruined the mission, so it's kind of your responsibility to like help me get information. Hey man, Dutch is a pure paragon, and the yeah, the true. reader of the film can only see him in this way because he's Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it's a movie made when it was made. Yeah, that's it's like the rock today uh, and we yes. any character the rock plays can't be any kind of moral shade of gray or anything other than pure white Sorry. and and so at the end of this scene not only do they do they add anna to the rank uh albeit as a hostage at this point but then we get the scene of hawkins telling billy the joke in which billy bellows a laugh and we also get bill duke's character mac picking the scorpion off the back of off the back of Dylan mm. a- and uttering anytime, <laughs> and, and we get our first indication that the whatever's hunting them uh, is can, humanoid. It is humanoid and can either understand what they're doing or can even record it or mimic it in a way. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a scene at the very end of this transition into the next part of the movie where Billy has been laughing and goes to walk off and he is maybe an echo of laughter and it stops. stops him and he looks around and it's only, I mean, the first few times you don't think that's what he's even hearing. You do just hear an echo of it. And it, it's a classic thing that this film does. And it started in the helicopter scene all the way back in that there's music playing and you just think it's a backing track for this movie. And it's actually playing on the boom box mm. in the same way that this laughter feels like it might be off screen somewhere else. And it's actually happening maybe within a hundred meters of this character who yeah. just laughed himself. 
and he can hear it. And, and it adds to this mystery of you don't know which audio is taking place yep. and, mm. and how loud. And, and we talked about how Schwarzenegger only seems to whisper. Yeah. <laughs> It, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, I, I just generally don't think there was any direct, it's directing in terms of. of how far people are from each other yeah. and how loud you have to be in these moments. So some yell, some don't. But they kind of play into that in different ways in that you don't know how loud things are. Yeah. Uh, or not intentionally. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, and so, we, and so we get that this thing hunting them mm. has capabilities of understanding them yep. and recording them. and It's part of how lean and essential and fantastic... Part of what's beautiful about the film is that each of these scenes is loaded. Yes. So you get like, it's a gradual with part of the tension. You get this gradual reveal that they are being hunted. It's not until this moment that you know it's humanoid or alien or what have you. You get a hint of some of the things it's capable of in that moment. And then you also get this continuing tension between the characters that we already kind of care about or, or do care about in that moment. So it's this one scene that ticks all these boxes. Mm. And you, So it's... I guess this is the turning point when it does become a creature feature rather than just a straight action movie. Because yeah, from yeah. here, it's revealed that the enemy isn't the enemy that they thought. Mm -hmm. They don't even talk about him. They don't even talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> and this is when they start getting hunted by the predator. Yeah, yeah. And they set up, which I think I noticed the time before this, mm. why they continue the way they do, even though they are being hunted. And it's because the entire area is surrounded yeah. with guerrilla fighters. And the only way out is through this valley, yeah. which, uh, <laughs> which uh, did you write it down? Is described. <laughs> when, when Dutch asked Billy uh, about which way can we get out. Oh, which way is the yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he has a great line. Oh, it's something about the dog. It's something about the dog. <sighs> I'm, I'm going to try and find it. Can oh, it was so good. Uh, oh, okay. But but it, it adds it adds um, depth to it because yeah. you you think they're just walking towards a certain place, but they've established in something I completely forget about that they can only go this way to get out, mm. which and is why they have to keep pushing through when they're being attacked. And it's another moment where your Paragon character, played by Arnold, defers to this guy Billy, who has mm. some preternatural gift, or is clearly even better than Arnold, and Arnold can recognize that. Mm. Dutch, sorry. Um, he goes to Billy and he says, Billy, get us away out of here. Sorry, I'm not going to do the shorts. No, I love it. Anymore. You should. Um, no. <laughs> it's like he's here. No, Billy, get us that way out of here. <laughs> um, and Billy, Billy says, well, there's one way, Dutch or Major. They call him Major. There's one way, Major. Um, and it's through this valley. Um, and he says, but I wouldn't waste that on a broke dick dog. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I've been looking at it. I've been I wouldn't going back. waste that on broke dick dog. Yeah. Yeah, what? yeah. What? Ha nope, it's, it's the gold. <laughs> it's pure gold. That's why uh, they kept it. From start to finish. And they yet, as stupid as that is, it sets up what they have to do. Yeah. Move this specific way. Keep on yeah. moving. Um, and they do, and they get hunted bit by bit. Yeah, yeah. This is where it becomes this stalking thing. So I feel like from here on, we should talk about just, we should go from death to death. Yeah. And, and cycle through and, like, obviously touch on them more if you feel like there's something to be said about the death. Quickly about, like, the... the not tonal change, but the type of narrative change here. Mm. Um, the director of the picture, whose name I can't call John it. John McTiernan. Just, thank you very much. John McTiernan of Die Hard fame. Nice. And Pro to the Fame. Um, John McTiernan um, equates the movie in his mind to King Kong. Predator to King Kong. Like, they go to this island to get this thing and they don't know what they've reckoned with or they don't know what they've come across. Mm. To my mind, it's like, it's like picking out it's like key structural features of the Odyssey in that there's this group of people that embark mm. on a journey. It's like one of the classics of literature and the classics of storytelling. Yeah. <laughs> a group of people, misfits with different skills, embark on a journey and slowly they're picked off and picked off and picked off and picked off until, uh, uh, until Jason gets his golden fleece. Am I mixing my... <laughs> I might mix Probably, but history. I love how you're like comparing but it. To it's, such it doesn't let's sound right, Odyssey. But I don't know enough about it. <laughs> Jason and the Argonauts going on uh, uh, the search for the Golden Fleece, and then all these people get picked off along the way, and he is the one with true valor who can get all the way to the thing. And it's like that. And these people, I don't know if it's in classic horror movie style where you've done something transgressive, therefore you must die. But there is sort of a um, a, a character relation in in deaths through the movie, 
Like there's a death of innocence with Hawkins and mm. it just goes on and on from there. And you learn about how it's hunting and how it's killing, but it's also related to these characters. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, so what's next? I guess it's we got to start going through the people and I feel like we go one by one and just talk about each death. Yeah, we get a little lead up to the confrontation they're about to start having mm -hmm. uh, or the battle they're about to start having. Uh, we get a couple of shots of them walking through the jungle. Dylan loses his prisoner at some point uh, and Poncho That's right. calls him CIA man or, or something like that in some very dismissive. It's fantastic. Government man, mm. something like that. You're not even a human. You're not even, you're not part of our group. You don't have a name mm. uh, thing. And what, what do you mean like Poncho? It, well, yeah, an, Poncho an Ramirez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has a name. Then they come to what is a big iconic moment in the film where they all kind of stop because Billy, their tracker, has just frozen solid and is just looking mm. out into the vast jungle. Mm. Uh, and we come back to what we were talking about earlier, the cinematography in which he's off to the right and front and centre of the shot is just this open jungle. Mm. And and you start thinking, is there actually anything there? Yeah. Like, I regularly look to see if you actually can see anything in, yeah, yeah. Mm. in any of those shots. I've never been able to see anything, but... But uh, Billy can. Billy can, Billy can sense can smell it. <laughs> I don't think that's the I, thing. I really think you said that, it could smell it. There's something in those trees. What? What's wrong with Billy? Was was the line from What's got line? Billy spooked? There we go. Uh, and uh, from this point, w yeah, we, we learn that uh, it's about, it, this is the kicking off point. This is where it's about to go down. Mm -hmm. And we get our first death. So we get Anna. She breaks free of being captured. She yes. hits uh, Poncho, I believe it is, with a... Branch mm -hmm. runs off and Hawkins is in close pursuit. Close pursuit. He runs away, grabs her, and, it, and is pleading with her. He's saying, please, please. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I mean, be quiet? I, I, reading into it a little bit, uh, again, really, uh, his lack of confidence with women <laughs> and, and showing oh, from, from the jokes mm. he was making, mm. which you look at the stereotype of people that tell those kind of stories about Ooh. getting laid and that kind of stuff. Ooh. Uh, they are often they don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. Mm. I mean, these guys have all like thrown her down and have. So you're, her. wait, you're telling me that Hawkins is an incel? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I know exactly. I, I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying he doesn't know what to do with her in that scenario. Definitely. Uh, where all of them kind of knew the rest of them knew what to do or, or, you know, they would have just pointed a gun to her head or grabbed her. He's kind of pleading with her. And from nowhere, the jungle comes alive. Boom. And you uh, don't get to see anything except for just a slight pop of kind of the side of his head. You see uh, a camouflage something move towards him. From from her point of view, though, you see her point of view looking over yeah. his shoulder for some time. She's clearly totally spooked. And um, he starts shaking and being like, please, 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 even more, more desperate because he doesn't mm -hmm. know what's going on. Um, and then that's when he gets it. Yeah. Yeah. First death. Of, 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 the, of the main team, probably like the one you can talk the least about because really it's he so was sudden. there. He was there to be killed. Yeah, he was definitely there to be killed. That character. yeah, and and help update the screenplay on set. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> as yeah. we've discussed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know they were done. Yeah, the screenplay at that point. That's it. Yeah, that's so, right. Uh, it's all just action now. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a off screen death. He kind of gets attacked, but you don't see anything particular happen. Uh, and I wonder if any of these kind of off-screen stuff have anything to do with ratings. Yeah. It's portrayed as being brutal. Mm -hmm. But very rarely do you see... I, I mean, you do for some of the deaths, but there are quite a few that are either are off-screen or kind of... There's Well, a, a, about the deaths and how they happen, um, there is kind of like a rhythm to it and an escalation and crescendo that ends right before Billy... And then that's a, a null tone after it. Because it kind of happens with other, like, horror movies where there's a creature stalking people. You're talking about your Friday the 13th or your um, Halloweens, where one creature's coming after all these people. And part of the fun becomes, in those movies, these new and zany ways that folks can kick it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of in here, but not... Because it's not like, oh, let's see what happens next. It's more that it stays fresh. Because what we know about the Predator up until this point is that some people got skinned mm -hmm. and that's it. 
We don't know so much about the rules around how he hunts or what he's after, what he will or won't do, and this introduces us to some of those things, in that it's unseen, it attacks from the jungle, and that's kind of what Hawkins was there for. <laughs> he was there to be that guy. So yeah. the predator gets him, the um, our plot device, the gorilla lady, um, sees Anna. it happen. Anna mm-hmm. sees it happen. Who, by the way, does not speak English until... It was convenient. Until she suddenly does. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then she even starts not speaking English in a moment where she should have. Yep. Anyway, that was hilarious. To be fair, she speaks, I imagine, Spanish. Yeah. To the person she speaks Spanish to is the guy who understands Spanish in the scene where she doesn't speak English. Oh, yeah. good job, Stu. Good. Because that started to bother me. And then, oh, then, you just and then I was like, oh, it was Poncho. It was Poncho. It was yeah. it was the guy that could translate. Yeah, so Hawkins gets pulled off, and then everybody follows up, and they can't see anything. Yeah, they're, they don't they're, see they're not sure if it was her. They're, I mean, they're pretty confident it wasn't her. Yeah, but yeah, maybe someone she was know. connected to. Who knows? Yeah, they're, they're in a panic, yeah. and and it does start to be that it's going to be this guy kills off these people one by oh, one, very slowly. Yeah, uh, which eventually they just lose that, and just it just becomes ten minutes of madness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it starts well, off that, you know, they're going to get picked off slowly it's for the a, next like, couple of hours or hour and a bit of the film. It's compelling because you're interested in what happens to them, but it is kind of a pretty quick descent into madness. Like, yeah. the pace picks up pretty quickly. So, Hawkins yeah. dies, he gets skinned, and they don't find anything of him except for maybe a pile of organs and skin. Yeah, there's a line there, isn't it? It's like, hey, what do you see? It's like, uh, have you found, have you found Hawkins? Hawkins? I think I have. Or I'm, what's I'm not thing? sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. I can't tell. Or... I can't tell. I can't tell. Yeah. That's it. That's the That's one. So yeah, Hawkins dies and they, they've got his body, though, and they carry him away with him because they're all noble and lovely and blah, blah, blah. blah. Is that Hawkins? Yeah. I thought it was the, the, the big dude with the Oh, no, you're right. Finger. You're right. My bad. Because, because they don't, they, they they don't know what happened to his body. body. No, yeah, yeah, that's right. It could have just been a pile of meat. That's right. Predator, the Predator takes Hawkins <laughs> away to do his nefarious shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and at some point, Billy kind of senses something's wrong, but he just only just misses the trick. So, you know he's fallible. There's like dropping blood from above uh, uh, above them, a tree. Yeah, yeah. None of them know right. it's going yeah, on it's in the great tree long, tops. Yeah, it's long one take of yeah. panning from them up to a bit of blood where they're still in the background, blurry now. It's a real solid All the way up, up to the uh, the corpse of, of Hawkins yeah. oh, tied in a tree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so, following as, on as from that... Keep, uh, yeah, yeah follow, following on next? from that... Well, they're, again, walking through the jungle and mm. we get the, once again, the dismissiveness of Blaine... Mm-hmm. He gets alert. It's just a couple of people. And, and, and it's just this, uh, well, it's a, it's this little raccoon or something. Yeah. This little uh, marsupial that kind of comes out of the thing and he's like, oh, <laughs> and turns away and then gets shot. Right. I'm going to think, well, first, like in the arm or through? No, it's right through the chest cavity from the back in his chest. <laughs> That's the second. He gets out. shot twice. Oh, does he? He gets shot and then, then turns and mm-hmm. then gets yeah, because he blast. also takes a, he takes a few <clears throat> shots at the at the predator, doesn't he? Like he he goes to shoot the guy and then yeah, he goes yeah. to he goes to use his ridiculous helicopter minigun, um, <laughs> old and, painless, yes, and gets it right through the chest. Yeah, and uh, has this huge open cauterized yeah, wound. Oh yeah, which is what I mean chest. when I say the intensity of the the kills kind of changes up along with the horror genre mm. in that the first person's kind of discreetly dead and you don't get to I, see it. I'd say this one's horror. still horror. And then here, yeah. yeah From this point is it's where it... has got gore. And yeah. then it gets gorier. Yeah. And they still don't... And then you get um, Bill Duke, who they, they've, they've made They've established a, a relationship between Bill Duke and... Yeah, Ma- Mac and... Mac and Blaine. Yeah, through the use of this prop that goes on in the background, which is the, the hip flask. They share a hip flask mm-hmm. and they share stories and Blaine... Calling back again to the helicopter at the very beginning, offers the tobacco to Bill Duke first, and Bill's like, and he doesn't, and Blaine doesn't take it as an insult. And then when Blaine offers the tobacco to everybody else, we, we all know the stunning line that ensues. They reject it, and he calls them a homosexual in a not a nice way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so th- this is when they first, someone from the team first sees the predator. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mac sees an outline of a humanoid looking camouflage thing and he mm. sees the eyes the glowing eyes yeah, the they glowing disappear eyes. into the jungle why he can't describe what he sees no one knows uh, <laughs> it's easier for the film if he doesn't I guess yeah uh, or maybe he, there's he, a guy definitely know. wearing camouflage out there yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely wearing camouflage and he was up in a tree 
Yeah. So we should probably look up. Yeah, yeah. And I love that that's a point that doesn't come up for like. Uh, but he did way see one long. of his best friends exploded through, yeah, the, uh, through, 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 the, through, chest. through the chest. <laughs> and this is the point where he picks up the MG and annihilates the jungle. Annihilates the jungle. That was. This is one of my favorite moments. This is it's, f- it is my favorite moment in Predator, yeah, yeah. I think. It's the fuck the jungle scene. <laughs> yeah. In, in which you. Uh, a feel squad of highly- saying. Just watch Schwarzenegger when he comes down here. Yeah. <laughs> and he just walks down without even question yeah. and just starts unleashing on the jungle. Yeah, These yeah. highly trained specialists that's, that's that right. do operations that nobody else can do. A rescue operations. Rescue operations <laughs> <laughs> that nobody else can do. Just unload an unseen foe. And they reload and reload and reload yeah. one by one. And then Dylan, CIA man, comes in with his hostage in tow, yeah. has half a look at what they're doing, throws her to the ground and starts shooting Just himself. jumps in. They, yeah, they don't take a moment after they need to reload. They keep going. Yeah. Uh, and just completely unload. And then basically, without knowing any of the terrain, then say, well, nothing could have survived that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that there was nowhere they could have hidden underneath things or, like, down a hill. Oh, man, that reminds me. I know that's, like, there's a bit of a segue going back to that gorilla base when it's like, okay, now let's cover up our tracks and keep moving. You're like, you just, like, blew shit up. So many bullets everywhere, like... You're picking. Oh, this is what I was saying when we were watching. It's like, did you pick up all the bullets? Like He's that you shot for days. Yeah, yeah, weeks <laughs> just to figure that out. Yeah. But and this is another example of like a, a lack of uh, effort put into uh, the the crew to. to cover their tracks and figure out if they've killed the guy. I think now would be the appropriate time to point out that this film exists in a hyper-reality. It's not really... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it doesn't really... Get, like, as much as it contrives to pretend to, it doesn't really adhere to the real world. No. No, it doesn't. Um, so, yeah, they fuck the jungle. That's and, so- and, <laughs> and they manage to wound... Not that they notice. Not that they notice at the time, although Anna does. Mm. They manage to wound the predator as it as it's getting out mm. Of, mm. of the the kill box, uh, so to speak, yeah. of the dead jungle. Yeah, all it did was now. jump up. Yeah, 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 just, yeah, yeah It right. just went to the side. Yeah, like, yeah. three so, meters to the left, and was like, all right, I'm good. It did not yeah. commit the cardinal yeah. sin. Totally, I've continued to run straight. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and and we get uh, a nice gory shot of uh, Blaine's carcass. Blaine's carcass corpse. Uh, which What's is, you know, some way? excellent makeup done to what definitely this still look like. Jesse Ventura laying yeah, gosh, yeah. Can, I, can I also just add that, like, according to this amazing SWAT team, <laughs> it all makes sense, right? They went into this, this base, they're shooting people up who just jump up. They're not getting shot. They just did the same thing just in the jungle. And at one target, of course it's dead. Oh, when we shoot makes things, this is what they do. In a direction, it dies. Like that's, that's, it's lit- that's literally cool. all they do yeah. in the movie is stand and shoot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So they just did the same thing. And of course, it worked. Uh, yeah. like, of course, that was how you succeed. So of course, this is what I mean. It's, it's a oh, really it honest. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah, honest characters. I think. I think really good directing here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we laugh, but yeah. <laughs> why, why do they open? Uh, why do they open? You know, open fire into the jungle like that. They've done it before with success. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Answer. Qu- question. Answer. They're not mad anyway. because madness would be if they did something that didn't work and they tried it again. They were doing something that did work and they yeah. tried it again. And it's the last sanity. time they do that. Yeah, that's because true. Because it didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Hey, Pure sanity. Adapt. These people. Um. Yeah. And, and so we get a bit of a we get a bit of a um a look at Bill Duke's character Mac unraveling. He he holds on to the uh, MG trigger yep. well too mm. long he he snaps and says he'll deal with the body yep he's not um responding to any kind of questioning about it as we mentioned earlier he's um yeah he's lost it a little bit here and the next thing that happens is that they want to fortify a position in case because they mm. realize that this hasn't gone very well yeah um, that they're getting ghosted one by one yeah, so yeah. they need to bunk down which is just another example of something that's a little bit tonally off in the picture that goes from like laugh a minute to like oh my gosh what's going on with um being bill duke um over the corpse of jesse the body ventura talk about old times staring at the moon same kind of jungle yeah have, having kind of a day. drink from the flask having a drink from the flask it's um, another i mean it's it's a little bit yeah. off and it it's still fine but um the flask is uh, again a testimony to the quality of um the production process in that you're just quickly layering these things in that don't seem like they mean anything earlier on that they're paying off again later on down yeah the mm, mm-hmm. yeah that's a good point 
Yeah. Yeah, and and the him making the noise mm. draws the the pig to him. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we, yeah. Which he then thinks is whatever it is. Yep. Uh, a trip wire goes off somewhere. Yeah. Hey, see, I he, think it was he the pig. a deliberate plan mm. on the part of the predator to drive an animal in. I definitely think the sitting the off the wire. Yeah. I don't know if the pig sets it off mm. or if yeah. he just gets the pig. Either way, we get another kind of insight into the monster that these people are facing or the yeah. creature that's hunting and stalking them. Yeah. It's intelligent and it's doing these extra things. And and while he is busy killing this pig uh, and they all have, they all give him they, a bit of, they, the big head bit of crap for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, they all have a chuckle. The predator you've sneaks lost, in. You've just lost your best mate uh, in the jungle. You're a little bit fucked up about it. Now you've killed the pig. Let's all have a laugh. Yeah. Like, yeah. Jesus, Get yeah. on you. <laughs> That's going to feed us for could days. It, could it have been bigger? Yeah. Something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, the predator sneaks in and uh, takes the body. Another mm. telling of, of the, the body. Yeah. Mm. Hey. 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 Look what you did there. Yep. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't get it. What, what it. It's fine. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll listen to this back and be like, oh, yeah. I still don't get it. Uh, so they, it's well, not- at that point, he was literally Jesse the body Ventura. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Huh? Oh, that's so lame. Uh, and and so, so they've lost two of them. So, so they've lost two of their members, and now they know that it's coming for trophies. And it hunts. And and that it hunts. And, and this Amy reveals. This, this is this is when Schwarzenegger decides enough of you guys trying to get answers out of our hostage. I'm I'm going to get our prisoner. Sorry, not hostage. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get answers. And it's when he delivers. And I do think it is. One of the only moments of depth from Schwarzenegger. <laughs> he delivers this dialogue to her that is, uh, you're not a prisoner in this scenario, mm. which he then acts out a bit later on. Mm. You're not a prisoner. You need to tell us what's actually happening because we're all going to die, including you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she can speak English and yeah. has always been able to <gasps> yeah, and yeah. has not been communicating intentionally bum, bum, bum. Uh, and says that something is in the jungle, something that can camouflage itself like a chameleon. Yeah. Uh, what are we fighting some fucking lizard? Something like that. Yep. Oh my god, it, they're wearing camouflage response. and saying that is just hilarious. Yeah, it, they're it, wearing jungle fatigues and they're like, <laughs> it, 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 it shows a um, if I don't know it, I can't comprehend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of From these dudes. approach that they have, and then she reveals um, that there was they a story. they nicked it, and that that's later on, mm. but that they nicked it. And when, when it came for Jesse the Body Ventura mm. and that it bled, mm. leading to the famous line, If it bleeds, we can kill it. Which, you know, it, it's funny to look back on, and, but it is a... It's contextually it, It's serious. delivered very, oh, yeah. very seriously. <laughs> yeah. And it, it then drives... It, it, it shows the descent from now. This isn't... And it, it is what triggers this mm. descent into death. Yeah. Because the, it's no longer a horror film, it becomes a action thriller almost again. Yeah, it goes, yeah, it does. It turns on a dime there. Uh, part of the, like part of what's interesting in the story is like who's who's predating on who or who's hunting who. Mm-hmm. Um, and this flips backwards and forwards, not only through this sequence where these people uh, slowly whittle down and die until there's only uh, like uh, one lady and one fellow left to fight the creature, but um, yeah, also it's I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> also, it's a great fucking line. Yeah, so it's great. Yeah, line. yeah, it's, really it's one of the greats. That was one of the ones that everyone remembers. It, it, it's I think it's the best out of all the lines. Mm. There are ones that I enjoy more, mm. but I think it is the best line in yeah. in, in Predator. Yeah. yeah, and it does mark that transition back to okay, now we're hunting. Mm-hmm. We have been hunted for this period. We've come to grips with what we're doing, and now we are hunting. And this this flips backwards and forwards, interestingly, through the whole thing. So yeah. This next little bit is a fantastic montage of these people coming. Yeah, we together. get a great montage of of, of shirts biceps. off, biceps out, oh. uh, lifting shit. Everyone has tickets mm. to the gun show. Damn. Oh yeah, um, get it. Yeah, they're they all dictionaries. Do I need to give you a moment again? Because they love that definition. <laughs> um, and and it's great. They set up these old school traps, <laughs> and. They start slowly going mad. B- Billy says, "We're all gonna die out here." Oh my god! Because yeah, he knows so what's up. Because he because yeah. he knows. <laughs> and then we get um, and Carl Weathers know. gets in on it finally. So he goes from being like, "What's up with this Boy Scout shit?" to being like, "Oh, I, I guess I'll help out now." Yeah, yeah, I'll show you my bicep. And and we get Anna. She tells the story of uh, my people tell of of a monster that came and yeah. and killed men only when it was the hottest years. 
and now it is very, very hot. And and, and what in, in Spanish yeah. translates to English as uh, the demon that makes trophies of men. <laughs> and it's this, it is this beautiful still reminder that this thing is <laughs> very horrific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Happening. I mean, and that it's ancient and old and that it's been doing this since forever and it seems like an unstoppable force. If it wasn't clear from it killing some of these, um, these crack military aces... And getting away with it. And, and it's, enough, it's yeah. enough context. It answers the question, why does it do it? Because it can yeah. and it has. Yeah. It, it, we don't need this, like, alien versus predator star. Well, if they leave any evidence, someone's got to come and, like, yeah, melt yeah. it all down. Don't have an explanation of a different planet. Or, mm. uh, actually, they've got trapped there and they need this thing to get their ship back. Yep. It's just, it comes when it's hot. It hunts men. That's it. It's so straightforward. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, it's not being lured no. by humans who want the technology. Nothing needs explaining. Did those franchises work actually coincide with each other intentionally? Mm. The Predator and Aliens? Yeah. Like, were they, was it supposed to? Oh, from the beginning? No, no, no. no gosh, no. no. There were separate just, films and they're like, hey, let's bring this together. Yeah. yeah. Make yeah. it up as they go along. Yeah. I, I think, I think, I mean, there may have been some comic and stuff beforehand. Yep, there was comic stuff. In Predator before. 2, they have a xenomorph skull on the predator ship yeah that was just a fun <clears throat> art design thing that somebody yeah made. i think that's the first oh. i think that's the first cross I, yeah. I don't know for sure but it, and it's not like we need to explore that it's no. that these guys go to multiple places yeah it's mm. not that they're all on earth doing they hunt thing. heaps of stuff uh i think uh may, this might be apocryphal but i think et is in there as well so it's oh, like, really yeah so it's just to <laughs> indicate that they've been all over the place and they put in some fun um, for the moviegoer. Yeah, they've done some yucks amazing in there. Um, that's the Speedo. Yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah. That's different the, races of well, it. Yeah, that's a really There's cool. a Speedo? We're referencing a scene from the very end of Predator 2 when we're talking about I'm just it. saying that's yeah, how yeah. far you know they've travelled, that they've got oh. all these different planets and movie planets franchises and, yeah, and, yeah. and kill the aliens yeah, yeah. from them. <laughs> we got Robin Williams from Mork and Mindy just in frozen in carbonite yeah. <laughs> as well. Nanu Nanu motherfuckers. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, uh, so we hear we hear the ghost story, um, and then uh, there's a bit of a lull in that maybe nothing won't happen, uh, and just as they think it won't be sprung and uh, caught in the trap, it gets caught in the trap, it shoots its way out, and calamity ensues. Yeah, yeah, we have ensues. one dude that gets hit pretty hard in the chest with, with the trap that they set up. Yeah, yeah, because the predator sets it off. Yeah, seem- seemingly intentionally. I-, I was getting the intentional vibe. Oh, really? I feel like they kind of got the jump on the creature, but it worked its way out of it. I know. I feel like that happened. The trap. No, the tra- I feel like it still got trapped, but I feel like in the process of being trapped, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I see that trap. I'm going to shoot that down Solid. to hit this other person yeah. and then get myself out of this trap and get out. Very cool. Uh, like as a distraction. Like, I- I d- it definitely got caught. I mean, like, it, it certainly... I, I don't get that vibe, but to back up that theory, it certainly sees a trap Schwarzenegger sets for it later and goes around it. Yeah, yeah. so it starts uh, to become it, smarter. It, it has clearly been hunted before. <laughs> well, no, it's it's hip to hunting. It knows yeah, how to it hunt, know, clearly. It knows mm. the tricks. It just doesn't recognise... I mean, it's it, it comes to recognise that the prey is figuring stuff out as the prey is figuring stuff out. And, and we get our, uh, yeah, our, we- our big, our big uh, Dylan character development moment in this scene yeah where he reveals maybe all that other stuff was a smoke screen Mm. Mm. yeah you know he goes after or mac has decided he's going after the predator he's seen him he wants vengeance he's already talked about carving got some proper rage going on his boy his dead boy's name in the predator skull or something like that he's running after him singing singing the song from the very start. And of, it's actually, movie. this is the first time that was pointed out to me. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that's something I got from this. Yeah. In that the song he's singing kind of in a delirium of I'm coming for you, Predator, yeah. is the song that Blaine was playing on his boombox. Yep. Mm. At the start. And, and, and more what I got from it, maybe that it wasn't that song, but it's that it's Blaine's boombox. Yeah, he's yeah, the yeah. One that turns it off. Solid. He's the one, pl- and he was the one that would probably listen to that music. What, Blaine or? That song, or yeah, Max. Blaine. Yeah, I feel it the other way around. That oh, Blaine's a Max. country and western guy, and Matt gave Blaine some of his jams, and Blaine put him in. Oh, so it's a strong. Oh, oh, I mean, like, like he was bond. listening to that music. Yeah. It was his music Got in the it. shop. Yep, yep, yep. Where, where, where it came from. But yeah. he's running off, and, and Dylan shows he is... He, he doesn't think people are expendable. He's come full circle with Arnold's point of view, or... He was there all along and was just hiding it um, this whole time. When he steps in, Arnold goes to go after Mac 
And then um, in comes Dylan. Dylan. Dil- Dylan stops him. Says, "You get your people out of here. Uh, I'm. Go- I'll go after him. Mm. I want payback too." Yep. And it- and it's a throwback to the guy who was previously dismissed as just a guy who was here. Mm. Who we sent in to try and figure out what happened. Yeah. Clearly was a friend or, yeah. or a good associate of Dylan's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now that he is definitive that it's this thing that's killed him, he's going to go after him as well. Yeah. And back up Mac. Yeah. And and it also it also could just be a moment of bravado where he's like, <laughs> I want to be the hero in the story. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't have to have any of the depth no, you've added to it. To. It still works. Yeah, Mind yeah. you. It's my predator's great. Mind you, Mac and um Dylan did have that history of animosity through the picture. So it, it brings a resolution to those two um uh not outdoing one another, but to um to, to max animosity towards Dylan. So they, what you're saying is that he, working he, together. He, they finally learn his characters only to be <laughs> yeah. brutally murdered. No, exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. Spoilers. But they didn't need to do that. Oh, my God. <laughs> they didn't need to do that, but, but they, there's did. A, they did. There's a beautiful mirroring of um, Dylan stepping wrong early on and Max saying, you, you give our position away again, motherfucker, and I'll ghost you. Ghost you? Ble- bleed you. I'll bleed you. Yeah, I'll bleed, bleed you. Oh, no, if you ghost us again, motherfucker, I'll bleed you. Yeah, yeah. And and now Mac is the one that's gone off. half and, and Dylan's gone after him. Mm. There's also the sc- Scorpion moment where Mac had Dylan's back. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now uh, Dylan had... Yeah, Mac had Dylan's, Dylan's back. back. And now Dylan's got his. Dylan's going to go after him. Or it could just be, I'm going to go shoot this guy because I can do it. Yeah, oh. yeah. And yeah. I finally saw him and I now believe it's not a couple of militants out here just picking us off yeah, totally. one by one. Mm. Um, and... They uh, put a scheme together. Once Dylan catches up, they put a scheme together. Well, before to that, there's a really cool moment. Predator. There's that moment that you're talking about where we don't know if it's the Predator replicating the yeah, of um, Max yeah. voice. There's Mac. Or whether it's him, he, uh, Dylan hearing it normally, like actually hearing Mac. Be- because it's that kind of stuff, remember? Yeah. And it feels what's uh, what you would describe as a diegetic... Like, either diegetic or non-diegetic sound. Is it, is it in the character's head? Yep. Is it something that we can hear out in the wilderness? That's actually technically not non-diegetic or diegetic, but it's it's something we're not sure where the sound's coming from. Yeah. It, it, it's a trick they've used. Yeah. Mm. In that... And it pays off because it makes it brings attention. Yeah. And it, it, could, it can be just as likely either. It could be Mac getting his reinforcements, seeing Dylan coming in, saying, get it over here before he sees you. It could be the Predator luring him into the kill box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It stays ambiguous. setting up. That's true. Um, and... They make their very stupid plan, which is to take their eyes off the camouflaged creature. Um, yep. Once because they, because they think they've got the... it beat. Yeah. Yeah. Be- because they think one's going to crawl in close and one's going to run around. And we get our very first look at the iconic tri beam, tri light predator <laughs> beam. Yeah, that's right. And it lights up Max's arm and he moves his head onto that. Yeah. Uh, I guess it would have looked pretty strange. It totally. didn't look like a little red dot from a. I mean, it looked like three little red dots, mm. but I don't think any gun has that kind of pattern on it, right? No. So it would look strange. And he puts his head up and blam. Bam. Yeah, that was a, that was pretty... Straight awesome. to the head. Yeah. And do you remember how they shot that? You, oh, that was by, back of the head. heard the flash. Yeah. yeah heard was... the flash. And then it's camera POV looking up at the guy's face, which isn't a face because they... It cuts to it after the face is already gone, and it's just kind of a, a sploosh of red um, yeah, yeah. viscera on directly camera. onto the camera, which is and tying then, back to this horror movie thing where we go through different textures of kill or, like, mm. different people die in different ways. And, and it's the first sign that the Predator is also quite cocky mm. because when it pans out, he's literally above. Standing he's over. come right down yeah. and yeah. to do it right there to just basically execute the guy. Yeah. yeah. It's an ego kill. Um, and then... Followed swiftly by... Um, what's its? Dylan. <laughs> Dylan. Coming right around and tracing his way back around to Mac and finding the corpse in the way it was. And then getting spooked by that and looking around and looking around a little too late. This is one of the scenes where you get a dense shot of the jungle, but the predator's actually in it. Yeah, that's right. Which was pointed out to me by Stu this time. I'm at like uh, viewing. Yeah, it was by me. Like yeah, time. yeah. I'm at viewing 26. Yeah, that's whatever. right. <laughs> that, that, that just, that's just that's out to me. Just there. It, and it was yeah. They are not unapologetically not trying to make and, a and of waiting it. for him, waiting to be seen. Yeah. Before he attacked. Yeah, and then they cut to the second shot where you, it's obvious that it's him. There, yeah. You know, and that's a, I think that's an awesome little like plug. Because like not a lot of audience members would have gotten that. Why spend this all one. that money on the effects for that shot if you weren't going to use it? Yeah. 
uh, or we weren't going to sell it. But it's like, no, that, that adds to it. It's awesome. And honestly, like I said to you, if you if you want to think what it might add in in second viewings, mm. I'm I'm sure it's not what they were thinking about as a direct thing to do. Mm. But how many times might have you just been hanging out yeah. in those shots of the jungle? Well, that yeah. one shot... I'm going to say not. Yeah. But yeah. That but one shot know. throws open the question. If you yeah. go back and be like, was he there? Yeah. Was he? I want to. I want to. Kind of. And we, and we have our first We have our first showdown between a uh, so member this, of this, this, Dutch's team this is and a conclusion. The this is a conclusion for these two people and for their arc. And it's like a, a, a face-off bravado sort of scenario with um, Carl Weathers. Yeah. So Carl Weathers <laughs> and on the, the first shot loses his his arm yep which continues Slug firing up. which is really great yeah uh, little note the first time i ever saw a predator i am confident the losing the arm scene was not shown <laughs> it had been edited out uh because what? i remember it being very distinctive a thing that oh my god that's what i don't remember that happening mm. and it's pretty it's pretty major yeah it's pretty graphic it's shocking. not really something you forget it's good stuff uh it might have been edited out i'm not sure but i i, I remember him being like kind of impaled mm. as as the predator approaches him and they have a bit of a showdown and the predator gets there first mm. and impales him um I remember that, but I definitely don't remember the arm being blasted off by mm. a cannon. That's At that point, he's got note. the two submachine guns because Dutch has thrown him one previously. Yeah, as a friend, a little bit of a nod saying, let's do this. Go kill him. I believe Good in luck. you. I'll give you my gun. He's a submachine gun. Yeah, I that's believe right. In you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, man, that's how I show my friendship. That's why none of you, my friend. I've got a cl- Oh, I wish I had a clip. <laughs> yeah, so that, yes. that brings to a close these two guys' story. And uh, the the... the the closing kill of this period of, of being hunted and being stalked by the predator, this closing um, a moment that kind of bookends the end of the really horror movie part of the picture um, is Billy's confrontation with the predator on the log. Yeah, that's right, because that's the that's next so thing that happens. Yeah, it all happens in this period. Split seconds. Very quick. Mm. Much faster than it takes to talk about it. Much. <laughs> yeah, a bit, uh, Billy basically allows Dutch... Anna and the wounded Pontro to get ahead while he decides at this one point where there's no other way the predator can get past mm. to cross this giant river. Maybe he can jump or whatever, you know. I mean, it is it is quite long. Oh, it is, yeah. yeah. I, this that's... time I looked at for it because it's something that I do think about. That yeah. it's a terrible place to fight someone that's way better than you on a log. Yeah. But uh, it, it might be the one place he might have a chance yeah. rather than with all the trees and not being able to see the guy. Yeah. Yeah, true. Uh, but then again, he could, like, I mean, like, he was also making an assumption that the predator will fight him mano a mano. I think he knew in that moment he was dead. Yeah, he yeah. He knew from, from he was so far it. back. It, it was a, here's a choke point, I can stop you mm. kind of thing. Which would have been smarter to maybe he throws get, rid of, away his get rid of the log, blow it up, I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's lots. There's probably lots <laughs> yep, of smarter things that. than that. Uh, Thanks, Piot. <laughs> you know, if they, if they probably uh, didn't, you know, if they just put down their guns. Yeah, maybe they wouldn't also, have even been attacked. But, you Can you know, imagine if that was a story? It's like it kills off one of the guys, realizes the guns, they put the guns down, they just walk to the helicopter and they fly off. Like and shakes like, hands predator, and says goodbye. Predator's yeah, just yeah. sitting up on a branch like... Oh. Not again. Out. Damn predator treaty rules. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's also the knives count? Obviously there's also something spooky and mystical about Billy doing this. Yeah. Because you've invested so much in this character. Being to be honest, I don't think they guy. even know for sure. They're still like testing the ground mm. like even when like Schwarzenegger like bashes away uh, Anna's gun so mm. that she doesn't get part of the trap I no. mean he's probably pretty sure but he, like he said beforehand like it's why he didn't take you you had no gun there's no sport yeah Something yeah like that. It, it is an assumption he's made uh, that's exactly my point is oh. that it might be not true like it, it could be a lie but either way you know it yeah. worked to a certain degree Dutch is uh preternaturally clever strong smart he's also got amazing reflexes for a normal human being mm. uh, and he's also really good at not being shot yep when people are shooting at him at that. he somehow becomes insubstantial when he's really good at fire comes yeah. his he's way. really good at lifting a truck he's sick at he lifting can lift stuff. The trucks yeah that's right yeah. Yeah. i think yeah. that's his thing also pulling down on vines very good at pulling very, down very machete good. throwing machete throwing yeah yeah so he's pretty much good at everything this is cb yeah. there's he's no really bad at, at swimming in waterfalls not so great at that yeah no. No, really <laughs> bad good. at it really bad at it so uh, top 10 skills and so we get this big confrontation between billy the badass yeah. who's dutch is constantly deferred to and the predator and it's an off-screen death beautiful in, in beautiful. I, I think it's, it's a, symphonic in its simplicity it's magical 
and and there's this the the scene is set where the path the other three are moving through are almost this tunnel of jungle mm. and there's almost this Ooh. visualization of billy's scream Ooh. coming up through the jungle mm. at them mm. nice like how you're telling this and story. and the pre- makes me want to watch the movie yeah, well, I mean, the sound is, I mean, yeah, we've already yeah. heard the screams and we've seen what the Predator can yeah, do with sound. Cool. And this um, scream comes up through the jungle and then the Predator is on them yes. mm. that quickly yeah. that it almost took this sound so long to get to them that the Predator was that quick. Faster than the sound <laughs> itself. Um, and, and, Mark one. And we we <laughs> then quickly have uh, Poncho dispatched with a shot to the head. Yeah. Um, Unceremonious. Yeah. He was given as much credence as the character was. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then... Anna goes to pick up the gun. Anna uh-huh. kicks it away. Anna kicks it away. No! Uh, and then goes to fire, has his gun shot at. <laughs> oh, wait. Melts his giant gun it... across oh, his okay. chest. Yeah. And then as he's crawling across the ground, yells... Get to the chopper! Get to the chopper! That's even better. Yeah, no, I, I'm gonna go with Ian's version of that. That was awesome. <laughs> and this, but this you know, you guys can off. judge if you want. I mean, we could spend all afternoon. Let's go get go. to the chopper! <laughs> we got okay. to, to the get chopper! Get to the chopper! Get to the chopper! Get to the chopper! The chopper! The chopper! Great line. Yeah, I'm just trying to do it as it's well. It's a great line. Still a line, and in context, not like stick around. Or knock knock. And can I just say one of the worst moments in that new The Predator, uh-huh. where there's some motorcycles and they're like, "Quick, get to the choppers." Uh, oh yeah, I it's mean, just- I enjoyed that stupid film, but now watching this one again, I was like, I, I will, I would enjoy the, that new one we watched less because of this experience. Yeah, I get you. I have seen Predator before, but I hadn't been on it a long time, and it wasn't until I saw it, I'm like, this is kind of why it's amazing. Totally. It it does reinforce how it holds up. Uh, so yeah, we've got like Arnie. He's now been not wounded, but he's been like, like burnt. Yeah, burnt from, from the his giant gun being split in part from Predator. Yeah, he's things. running. He slides down a mud track. Falls, falls, in, falls in into a fountain. waterfall. Waterfall. Yeah, he's, not good. he's not good at <laughs> tiny waterfalls. little fountain that's been prepared by some. Falls into person. an additional waterfall, which yeah. is much bigger. Double yeah. waterfall. And then swims his way to shore. Claws his way out through the mud. And, 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 he, and, and has a moment of, of uh, breath. Mm. Just kind of pauses for a moment. And then you get that, the pred- that sound of the, splunch. Like the, the predator falling down into the water that's come after him. Can I just say the predator's a little dumb if it was like... Because like, it jumps in the water and clearly has a malfunction of its suit. Yeah. And well, like, the, the stealth tech. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, are you, were you, like, did you not see for, that you were jumping? Maybe it hadn't jumped in water before. Yeah, well, see, that boggles my mind as well. Because for a guy with a crab face, you think you'd be familiar with water. <laughs> well, maybe it's never had to. Maybe that's why he's afraid of water. I, there, there is this weird look of like, okay, I'll just turn it off. Something's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll just yeah. turn this off. Yeah, maybe it does. It's supposed to, it is supposed to work in water and then he did it and there's a malfunction in it. Yeah, like, oh, I mean, he, he's still able to use it later in the film. Mm. And as many, like, as many questions as we might have about it, I think the film is stronger for not answering it, which is a problem that sequels have. They yes. seek to answer all these yeah. questions. It's, yeah, we, that's right. We, and it also allows, like, it, it is a device that allows Arnold to see it without really making us question. Totally. Solid. Beyond doing a podcast about it where we're intentionally questioning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> camouflage and water. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't have a camouflage suit. I don't know how it works. Yeah, yeah that's right. But speaking of really simple devices that allow you to turn the story on its head, Arnie's covered in goddamn mud and the freaking... Uh, Crab face fish monster, Rastafarian crab face fish monster, <laughs> can't see him anymore with his fancy specs. Yeah. Shoots a little rat instead of Arnie. And so the conclusion to this, where like <clears throat> the hunter becomes the hunted, um, all turns on this discovery that Arnie's made. Ah, oh, so now there could be someone else that is the predator. Might well be. <laughs> no, it's just the predator. Oh. Yeah. Just the predator. He's the predator. That was dummy in. We get this excellent <laughs> montage of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger preparing, preparing traps. Yeah, uh, that was that was awesome. Old, old, pits, old school traps, trip wires, crushing rocks tied to trees, and fancy little flash bomby, explodey things with leftover grenade parts, spears, bows and, and, and arrows, other assorted doodads. 
and we get you know a shot of the predator cleaning his gear, heating up his uh, claws. Right. He has his own montage, and and we get this sense of not not that the predator also does these things that now Arnold Schwarzenegger is doing what the predator does. Yeah, preparing, going into these you know zones of death where it can then kill all these things with all these things that it's set up, and you don't know what else the predator might have set up in no. the past. Uh-oh. It's capable of preparing. It is. Perhaps we have a new predator. No, it's just still the predator. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> just still the predator. Um, <laughs> and I mean, it's it's pretty great. It is now just balls to the wall action. Yeah. In this end of this film, and such fantastic pyrotechnics. Yeah. Oh yeah, some of it's spectacular. Some of the most terrible on. choreography. There's that stunning shot of the predator, um, the predator silhouette. Standing on a bridge, firing. Yes, and only yeah. lit, well, not only lit, but seemingly Almost only lit entirely. by the explosions going off in the background. Yeah, uh, as he's getting and and he can't see Schwarzenegger, and neither can we. No, all he can see is this fire. Yeah, as can we. Yeah, uh, there's some really nice shots of that where you can't see the predator, for example, Silhouettes in the jungle, the fl- and neither can you know the commandos mm. and the predator can't see Schwarzenegger and neither can we oh. there's some very nice not first person view kind of things mm. but representative of of the scene it is chaos yeah. I do remember an important moment that we need to address and that was uh, Ian's reaction you were saying that like like when there's the prep from Arnold Schwarzenegger mm. that's like the whole pace of the film just slows right down yeah, to does. like a, a crawl mm. which isn't necessarily massive criticism but it's it is really funny going from this like running away quick jump you know run yeah. oh my god get to the chopper and then it's like slow paint putting on his face or mud and it's like and like not even so slow that like slow. like you're deliberately slow like you didn't need to do like are you not worried that he's watching you right now? <laughs> it, it, like, it is. It definitely feels like something, a a reprieve for audience members who have seen this in a cinema. Oh yeah, they've had yeah. all this stuff happens. It definitely doesn't feel like something they've thought about long term. Mm. I mean, on, I only bring it up because he did direct it as well. But Die Hard has that moment where the FBI guys take over. John McClane has his moment with the cop where the cop tells him what he did he mm. shot a kid yep uh it, it is another slow part in that film mm. in, in, in almost the exact same position before the big crescendo of of what's to come yeah, and it, it does feel like in a cinema I, I mean i've fallen asleep in the exact same moment mm. watching it at home mm. maybe even watching it with yeah, you. yeah in a cinema it would be very different you'd be getting your moment of like they're getting ready for yeah. the for the finale now yeah. um but it does yeah it does draw it does taper off in that part too. that was cool yeah, because it's so black and so dark when Ian's watching this picture in the third person at home at like midnight or one o'clock in the morning that's when it's like okay yeah, I'm falling yeah. asleep and I, see what you I mean. can't help it yeah, yeah that's fine <laughs> and I, I believe that like but it's still fantastic and it does serve the purpose because the tone has been popping heads like raspberry jam everywhere mm. from all these deaths and then you have this switch and you slow things down and you get ready for this a climactic confrontation between alien and man and it's that that's also kind of like lost to give in the suit yeah <laughs> you know like there's the mano a mano lead up where um the predator finally catches up to arnold after he's he's been uh, shed of some of his technological capacities from all these explosions and different this gorilla stuff that arnie's doing to the predator the predator finally catches up with him and grabs him by the neck and scans him to see what's up with his face because he likes skulls, um, and realizes that Arnie's got nothing else special going on for him. At which point, the predator demasks, demasks to reveal the gorgeous visage beneath, and followed by that line. Yeah, and and <laughs> and, and there's a there's a leading up to that this great back and forth of underestimating each other based on the tech that they've got. Yeah, mm. he he underestimates Arnold thinking there's no way I can't see him. Yeah. And then leaves a trail in which Arnold thinks there's no way... He doesn't... He, there's no way he thinks I can tra- trace this. Yeah. And then almost gets caught. And they both go back and they end up ditching all that stuff to come down to just a one-on-one fight. Yep. Uh, revealing the alien's face. Yeah. And he drops his gauntlet. He does. Drops all his weapons. And he's one ugly motherfucker. Yeah, that's a brilliant line that completely contrasts what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately for like the fantastic costume designers we've 
talked about mm. briefly already. They had a costume ready to go for the original person who was going to play the Predator, and it wasn't quite right, so they brought Stan Winston in to come up with this fantastic design. Stan Winston was working with uh, old boy Deep Sea Divey Submarine Man, James Cameron, mm-hmm. at the time, and it might have something to do with the Predator face's design, being that it looks like a deep sea creature with these spines and bits. It's very crab-like. It. Very crab-like. But the original Predator the creature was supposed to be this ninja kind of thing that scuttered about and did all these crazy acrobatics. The one that we ended up with was kind of a giant monolithic seven foot tall um, dude uh, played by the guy who played Harry from Harry and the Hendersons. Um, and as beautiful as the costuming is... Kevin Bitterhall? Close. Kevin something or other. Um, as beautiful as the costuming is and as detailed as it is and as imaginative and fun as it is, the, the guy can't move very fast in it. No, no. And that's, that's where you see the choreography be so, like... Lackluster. Lackluster. And cutting, constantly cutting back to that vision of his where you can barely see anything. Yep. Kevin uh, Peter Hall. Kevin yeah. Peter Hall. Uh, which I... Which, I mean, like, it serves its purpose. It yeah. certainly does. But, it's, but it is very underwhelming. <laughs> Yeah. Which is, but it's fine because the film, I wasn't waiting for this moment. I was more just wanting to know the result. Yeah. Like, I think the outsmarting was more fun than the. And the that's fighting. where they return. Once the fighting's, I mean, not moot. Um, yeah, it's but- very clear Arnie cannot win this fight one on one. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, he, and he tries to lure the Predator into what we think is the trap he set up. Mm. And Predator, knower of traps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, identifies it and basically shoots Arnold the smug look of yeah nice try steps around me. and Arnie Come does this mm. I'm not that the predator sees it for camera look of oh no I'm screwed <laughs> until the predator is like gotcha and then Arnie sn- like kicks out kicks out the actual trap and, and drops a log right on predator's face boom yeah get it bosh <laughs> And this is where we get to Watch this really watch. cool part of the, the the film, I think. Oh yeah, Wait, yeah, because like we like obviously Arnie's there and he's Arnie's like, oh my god, you know, I did it, and then suddenly the log moves. Mm. And you, first you hear the noise of the predator, and then the log moves, and you're like, oh, he's still alive. And he goes to grab the rock, and he puts the rock above the predator's head, and then he really crush his face in. Yeah, that's right. And smash crab. But then something happens, right? Then he starts. Then the predator and him. Yeah, the, the predator's already. He, he's clearly had it. <laughs> Yeah, he's coughing up green blood, uh, and and Arnie doesn't doesn't finish him off in that moment. It, it, mm. It's this very um, kiss the fish and release it, Rex Hunt kind of moment. <laughs> you know, and for all the audience members who didn't watch shit let in me the night, let yeah, me explain right. my niche reference. <laughs> See, Rex Hunt. Here we go. Is a fisherman. So the predator, um, <laughs> a, in a last stitched maybe attempt to kill Schwarzenegger to cover up his tracks. Who knows? Sets off a bomb uh, with his wristwatch. But before he does that, doesn't he also make some noises? That that, or is this after he sets off the bomb? So I thought, I thought uh, Arnie might... says to him, th- "There's a line that asks, oh, he says, what the fuck are you?'" And then Predator replies back, "What the fuck are you? What the fuck are you?" Yeah, uh, revealing that he's been able to copy yeah, and learn, and then sets off this explosive device on his wrist, and then copies Billy's boisterous laugh yeah as a from after the seizure as a probably. final f you to arnie if i'm going down i'm gonna take you with me mm. while i'm laughing the voice of your dead yeah. colleague and i didn't notice that because i was like oh that sounds like a human voice that sounds really bad i didn't think i didn't make that connection until you pointed it out and i was like oh yeah that joke and he has because it was something weirdly unique about that laugh mm. billy's <laughs> laugh <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's like one for Jeez. one. It's like, and this this alien's also probably in some ways trying to communicate, like, and it communi- it's communicating in a way that it knows it it's seen how to communicate. If you know what I mean. Yeah, so and and it showed these moments throughout of, like, you're not better than me. It gets right up and close. It, it takes the first couple of guys very stealthily, and then it gets right up and close with uh, Mac and Dylan, who were the first ones to try and go after it. Yeah, mm. and then it, I mean, who knows what it does to Billy. Uh, but then there's the moment of, you know, he, he impales, uh, he, he puts blades either side of Arnie's head and can just yeah. kill him right there, but decides, no, you've caused me enough shit. I'm going to fist fight you. I'm going to, yeah, break you. And then, so he clearly, there's an arrogance to the character, mm. um, and a knowing. 
yeah. of, of how to torment, you know, it, maybe it knows or understands this uh, story that people tell about it. Yeah. yeah. And that it's part of, it's part of the ritual that it does these things to grow the story. It, know that it knows that it's a legend. It can be something more than a man. <laughs> it can be... A symbol? A symbol. That this jungle rallies around. <laughs> no, yeah, you, you, you're spot on. It's like a, it's definitely an apex predator that knows it's an apex predator and is proving this to anyone who uh, challenges that. And then subsequently killing them. Yeah. yeah. And taking the spines and... We didn't and mention things. that we do see Billy spine being ripped out. Yeah. That's the only time in the film we see someone's spine being ripped out, I'm pretty sure. It's Billy's spine when he's like up on the tree. This is the yeah, yeah, pre- yeah. preparation well, moment. So, so it's the first moment. So Hawkins is skinned. Mm. We don't know what happens to the other guys. One shot through the head. One is. It's the first time you see it take a trophy. Yeah. Mm. And, Not that it has And it before. is the first time that it's gone in the film one on one fight against someone. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's been moments where it's gone against just one person, but yep. this is a. Billy has thrown down. Yeah, yeah. And it takes and it just discards his body. It just mm. throws it off the the tree yep. and just wants the skull and the and it cleans and it, it and too. it has this thing of roaring when it does it and then later on Schwarzenegger when he lights his torch. Yeah. Roars into the jungle this epic roar. Yeah, that was a really good It's roar. great and you know like everyone felt tingles that day when, <laughs> when Schwarzenegger did it because it would have been awesome. Yeah, yeah. And like, hopefully that was an ADR, because... No, I don't think that would have I been. really hope it wasn't, because it was just so good. He's those covered eyes. in mud, and he looks like crap. The whites of those eyes. Yeah, that And he would have so been good. freezing with all that mud on him yeah. and stuff, and just, like, belting out this roar. It's great. I don't know if he'd be freezing. I'd say he'd be like... What's a night shoot? Yeah, but it's not a jungle. I thought the nights oh, might yeah. get quite High cold. Humidity. Oh, maybe. I don't... They probably wouldn't have done it in summer. I would think yeah. so. I don't know. I mean, it could have taken four like, years to make. They might it seemed have. like there was a heck of a lot of mistakes made in the production. Yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> if you like, do you, uh, do you want to talk about things that we particularly love about it? Because now we've come to the end. Yeah, this is it. Like, obviously, to, uh, he yeah, wins. And he gets to the chopper. He gets yeah. to the chopper. And, and so did Anna. She got to the chopper. You know, let's just, let's just remind ourselves in a really hilarious kind of way. <laughs> He's just standing there at a smoke. Contemplating. Yeah, looking, you're contemplating. The then looks up. And the chopper's there, and then he gets in the chopper. Looks more disheveled when he gets into the chopper. And then, you know, we have our shot. and Yeah. We see that really yeah, weird credit sequence that you guys... You were saying you didn't like. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's odd. It, it, you've had this big moment of confrontation, big action sequence, big yeah. bomb going off and destroying what looked like a good amount of the jungle. Mm-hmm. And then it's this character shots of the actors, uh, uh, you know, saying... Bill Duke played Mac, mm. and, it, and it's a shot of them, and they turn to camera, and most of them smile. Or uh, uh, Shane Black's reading a comic, just in case you didn't get he was the nerdy one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, a, cu- a couple like- of them have their trait, and then there's the Arnold Schwarzenegger one is just a still from the movie. Yeah. I don't know. That, that the rest of the credits end up playing over, but does it not look like an in-memoriam reel? That, that's kind yeah. of, that's kind yeah. of like, what it was like. Because they didn't know actually, I mean, none of the main cast actually died making this movie. So it's not a real... <laughs> it it kind of feels like that thing they do when someone does a biopic and then they show you the pictures of the real people. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Which often takes me out of the film as well. No, totally. So it, it's, just, it's just odd, tonally. I find it strange mm. that it's in there. It's still just class. Um, I don't know. The whole thing, all of these, all of these faults and eccentricities and oh, accidents yeah. of history just add to this. I mean, that, that's not the movie. Disgusting it, diamond of a movie. Th- that last part of it does not affect the movie in any way. It's no. just it's oh, just, no. it's just an odd thing yeah. to have after the end. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not plot. It's not, you know. And th- this, movie's done, this movie is done when he kills, like, the Predator explodes. Even the, the scenes afterwards, there's not nothing they can, there's nothing they can do. Yeah. He, you just need to see him making it. Yeah. Which is then you need that conclusion. You yeah, need, you need your John McClane getting in the car, driving off scene. You need that kind Little of spell. end. <laughs> so with all that, like this is it. This is the end of it. Now, from listening to you guys chat and watching the film and stuff, there was like one thing that I remember sticking out, and I wrote it down because I was like, if I were to describe why this movie is brilliant, mm. I would say 
it it's brilliant because it allows you to speculate and that's the bulk of it like the, that's actually why it's amazing because that's it gives you just enough information to get you through the plot and that everything else is just fun to like laugh at to speculate to, to draw conclusions and yeah and form your own story at the end of it it's just simple guys are there to do a job they get tricked and then they get hunted by a beast. Yeah, everything else. Th- is there's no ahead. bunch of insane asylum former soldiers now with PTSD and Tourette's. Mm. Also, a guy who's estranged from his wife. Also, has an estranged kid. Also, was on a secret mission. Also, there's a secret government society. Also, they know what the predator is, but they have a cool and they have a cool name for it. That's all in one of the sequels. <laughs> yeah, that's just one. <laughs> or also, there's not this society built around. The predators and how they have predator detectives and they clean up messes and they do all this stuff and then the yeah. predators maybe created the xenomorphs and yep. there's none of this it's just it's just simple and so you can bring whatever you want to it because it doesn't make you roll your eyes you're not sitting there going oh yep you're sitting you there guys- like maybe this maybe this yeah did you guys play the doom remake so they did a remake of the a classic yeah. doom game mm. and that for me reminds me of the only way that the predator could be done well yeah is that they would take the film that was there and just have fun with it in a modern day kind of like setting, which I don't think any of the ones like that, that when we watch them have ever come close to. No, every single one has gone some extra way to explaining the characters that you don't need explanations for yeah. or the creature that you don't want explanations for. Why can't for? we just have another awesome action movie? Or blending with, stuff together. That is, that has better choreography, has better power moments, mm. you know, like that, that, yeah, why can't we just do that? Why does it have to be explained and understood? Yeah, what? Well, why do we need to have 35 minutes of teen drama when there should be aliens killing predators? Shout out mm. to you, Brother Strauss. Yeah, Brother Strauss. That Alien vs. Predator scene, though, in your Alien vs. Predator movie is wicked. Yeah, that one scene. Good job. Where the alien vs. the predator. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Everything else. If only that's what the movie was about. Because <laughs> those could be trashy. There could be, like, trashy fine sequels. There could be a yeah. perfect remake in the same way that I think Gus Van Sant remade Psycho in the exact same way. Who was that? Wasn't Gus Van Sant or somebody else? No, Doesn't I think matter. it was Gus Van Sant. Oh, cool. Well, just completely, re- like, someone was going to get the right to remake this. I might as well do it because the studio is going to do it anyway and then make mm. an almost frame for frame remake, but, like, casting against type in a really messed up way. So you could frame for frame remake Predator the casting against type in a really messed up way. Or you could just keep pumping out trash movies yeah. that, that are fine and don't need to explain anything. Instead, it's halfway in between where they pump out trash movies that are just it's totally unsatisfying <laughs> with characters that you don't care about doing things that don't matter. But it's just like a complete misunderstanding of the purpose. Yeah, like the... the like. Okay, the kills are great, but that movie is not great because of the kills. It's great because, one, it keeps changing over time. Yeah. I mean, now it is a takedown, in a way, of machoism yep. and, and arrogance. Yeah. In, in that it, arrogance is still what gets the Predator killed. It yeah. gets all of them killed. Uh-huh. Uh, they don't take this thing seriously. Yeah. Uh, but nothing, no, none of the takes from that, the Predator lore is not that cool. Yeah. None of it is that cool when you really look at it. Yeah. There's some parts of the movie that are cool, but mm. it's like the core is that it's so simple that you can enjoy it. You don't have to think of any of this stuff we've talked about. No. None no. of it. Is, like, you don't have to look into character arcs. You don't have to think of any of that. It just works on a pure level. I mean, it's, it's not bulletproof, but it's so simple. There's just no depth to criticize. <laughs> What a sweet backhand again. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I said the same thing about... Me. No. I was going to say <laughs> Die Hard in that, like, yeah. it's just, it's too simple to have yeah. that many flaws. Yeah, yeah, totally. And and every flaw that they, it has, other than, you know, some things that were a product of the time, we talked about those, mm. uh, they all have their comeuppance in a way. Yeah. You know, this this woman that clearly is not that bad, she survives. All mm. these guys who are clearly murderers and yeah. arrogant, yeah. yeah, they all die. They all get killed. Uh, and the only one that's shown any sort of remorse, even though he, you know, sends a truck of burning death into <laughs> a guerrilla camp, uh, survives the film. It's just, it's very simple. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know. Like, you were talking about Fight Club earlier. I think I've seen that movie three times, start to finish. I've definitely watched Predator over 10. Mm. It's just easy. 
Oh yeah, does everything I, you, you don't want. have to commit to it. It has all the minimum action tropes. Yeah, it has none of the things. There's not a single scene in that that I think, oh god, I have to watch that scene. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, except for the really slow face painting with mud scene. Still, I'm all right with it. If it's I'm not super I don't tired, I'm still fine with it. Yeah, I don't hate it. It doesn't make me not want to watch the film. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. And once you start, you don't stop. Tell you what, would it uh, would it have made you not want to watch the film if the Predator was played by John Claude Van Damme. I don't know. I feel like I would have still wanted to watch it. Yeah, I think his, so. His idea was that he'd get to fight Arnold Schwarzenegger and show off some of his kung fu skills as some kind of ninja dog predator. Oh, so pre-expendables. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of cool with that. I don't. I think that'd be interesting. The predator that might have been in my head. It's kind of like a Roger Corman picture, or like a, a shot like a shit episode of an '80s Star Trek. Um, <laughs> you know, like the new Predator film we watched? Yeah. The Predator. Is that what it's called? Um, Shane Black. There you go. With Shane Black. Who also took the wrong lessons from Predator. Yeah. Der- no. And for me, like that- Half of the wrong lessons. Hey, it takes a team to make a movie. There was a lot of, like, a lot of that film well, was obviously not really good. But I think if you, like, I don't mind that version of The Predator mm. if you didn't explain it. None of this hunting for DNA and trying to make the perfect thing. Like, just be like, no, there's a big butch, like, massive predator that's tougher than all the other ones. Yep. We'll, like, figure it out. Like, maybe do a couple of shots where it kind of hints to that if you, you want to. You can take some DNA. You don't have to have someone try to explain that they know. Yeah, Nobody exactly. knows what he's doing. He's he an alien from another planet. Totally. Exactly. He's a big monster. He could have just been a big dude from the planet. And this guy, the other guy was normal. Like, it's like... You know, done. You, cool. there, yeah. there's a scene... Where he get, uh, Arnold gets the mud on him in this film, and uh, we see that the Predator can't see him now. Now Arnold mm. has an advantage that he can't be seen, just like the Predator can't be seen. He just says, he couldn't see me. There's no, he's got thermal tech and I'm cold now. Yeah, got it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's just, he, he doesn't know why he can't see him. He looked right at him. He didn't see he was there. Yeah. The only thing that's changed is that he's got mud. Mm. One he can't plus see one equals two. <laughs> yeah. It's not, oh, he's got thermal vision, all this stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah, maybe mud doesn't cover thermal vision. Maybe it's not thermal vision. Maybe it's... Anti-mud vision. Reg- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I can see everything except mud. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Though I did say it, would, it was really funny when, like, when you, the trees and stuff would get in the way because they're no heat signature. It would, like, just be the black lines. I just thought it would be really funny if the predator kept walking into branches. <laughs> couldn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, you know, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's lots of hints of stuff that aren't important. Yeah. And again, that's that it makes it great as well. None of the great stuff about it makes it, it is important. That there's just the, this solid base mm. of the movie mm. that isn't impacted by a- any of the stuff we've talked about. Mm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, you know, yeah, I don't like that it's got those references to homosexuality and. Uh, and misogyny uh, and yeah sex, and misogyny and that yeah. kind of stuff but like it doesn't make it a worse film it just shows that there are some moments in that film that aren't great like mm. it doesn't have an actual effect on and the these characters are a product of their time yeah, yeah. And, and you know they are kind of saying these characters are shit and the whole thing yeah, yeah. you could just delete I don't think that was those lines yeah, that's my point. It's like you could just literally re- like change those lines around it would and the film it. wouldn't yeah that, that's amazing. the disappointing part about it yeah yeah that you could still have them show those character traits without actually having him say those words yeah yeah what was um, that a huge thump I was like Vroom. that's what i felt prayer to the landed oh we're gonna get killed guys Over here. Over here. <laughs> um ian any final thoughts um yeah none we've gone through i've got like a i've still got a laundry list of different things that we could talk about but in in no sensible depth or in no quality but the Better. final thoughts Part are that, that it's happen. yeah the Predator the part two. Once we watch, oh, I'd, I'd highly recommend that people um, go and see if it bleeds. We can kill it on YouTube, which is like a fifty-minute documentary about them. Yeah, I'm totally. And to if you can pick up the appropriate DVD commentary, then you get to hear people involved in the production ragging on the production. Um, yeah, I think it's artful in its simplicity. Um, mm. For one, for for the construction of the film, and for two, um, I think it, as a consequence, as Stuart said, as a consequence of some of the simplicity, it can be endlessly picked apart and different lenses can be put on it and we can understand it in different ways and this is going to be a little bit uh academic wank but like there's a real good queer reading of the film 
there's some stuff that goes on in there. I'm not the person to do it, but there's some stuff that goes on in there in the same way that there's some stuff that goes on in Top Gun. Yeah, um, where right. You, where you can reread the movie and be like, oh, damn. Yeah, yeah. Is that, why is he doing that? Oh, I see. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's self-critical. It's fantastic. I don't... Uh, just the more you know about how this basket case of a movie came together, the more surprising it is that it worked. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a... there's a. My thoughts on it are when I say it's a simple film, it's selling all the work that's gone into something like that show. Mm. In the same way that Mad Max Fury Road is a simple film. Yeah. They yeah. travel to one place, doesn't work out, they come back. Yeah. Yep. In that the amount of work to go into that film... And, and this is where I think a lot of action films go wrong, is that the amount of work that goes into the film doesn't need to be represented in... The complexity of making it doesn't need to be the complexity of the film. I'm looking at you, yeah. Tony Jar, with three angles of the one flip. Yeah, we know, yeah. The fli- we know the flip is impressive. Yeah. yeah. You've only got to show it once. And it's something I think John Wick does quite well, in yeah. that it puts a lot of work into making things look simple. Mm. Um, and this film does that. I mean, everything in this would have been scripted really tightly. Everything in this would have had a reason. Every shot is used for a reason. Mm. It's just to make it really easy and accessible for everyone yeah. to watch. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I don't think you have to have 7,000 plots. They probably had all this idea of what The Predator was yep. written somewhere. Yep. Totally. Conceptualized. Yeah. That they burnt or never never showed to anyone or didn't need to show to anyone. Yeah. Maybe the guy playing the Predator. Can I can I tell you the genesis of the, like, the core conceit of the movie? There was a joke going around Hollywood after um, after Rocky IV came out. Mm. And he beat Ivan Dragunov. Drago. Ivan Drago? Yep. Ivan Drago. Um, and so, the people who were writing the script, um, it was called Hunter. It was based off the joke that who can Rocky Balboa fight in Rocky V? After defeating this human colossus, Ivan Drago, it's going to have to be an alien. Mm. And that's where they started. Oh, really? <laughs> These guys started with a little joke like that and then built in layers from there. Jeez. And that- it, it still is. That's the concept. Yeah. Mm. Stallone versus alien. Yeah. But with a different Stallone. And a different- <laughs> with a Stallone clone. Yeah. And a Stallone version of an alien. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's like how Arnold Schwarzenegger versus Beast Alien that hunts people. That's yeah. that film, if you want to describe it like that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> There's a beauty of the good idea, like describe. I mean, describe work it. People describe like, action movies that short. Yeah, these days it. Well, people, I think, like describe the work. Predator in one sentence. Well, it's you know Arnold Schwarzenegger beats Alien. Yeah, that's right. You're right. That is the only Predator movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, sorry. No, no, no. You were right the first time. <laughs> describe Shane Black's The Predator. No, it's the same movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger fights an alien, wins. It's I mean, yeah, but there's so much more. No, no, I mean, there's only yeah, just yeah, okay. still, just still the one we're talking about. I get you. I get yeah, you, you can't. Yeah. Those movies are too complicated. No, no, I think it's beautiful. I'm appreciating it way more than I should. <laughs> right, we've heaped a bunch of praise on this. <laughs> Yeah, right? And yeah, it's not, it's watch, not really that good. They'll watch the first five minutes and be like, what the shit? Lower your expectations, ladies and Yeah, gentlemen. maybe. But, like, keep an open mind. Just but, hopefully I'll... you like seafood. It has a bunch of muscles. Oh, can I? Uh... <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. Well, there's something I was going to say about, about films. Anytime. Anytime. Uh, either way, it's <laughs> nice. All right. I think that's it. Say it. Cheers for that, guys. Yeah. It was fun revisiting I had fun. the action classic Predator. Yeah. Was that what we were watching? What were you? Is it? I was just on my phone uh, texting. Uh, yeah. I was just hoping you guys would be able to piece the story together. Well, yeah. magically, you still got all the plot points, which proves that it's a good film. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> just Googled the sentence. Uh, yeah. I'm much more on board than I thought I'd be. Really? With like a, no, you know, I love Predator. Predator's great. It. Yeah, Predator is awesome. I walk away from just saying that Predator is a great film. I, I still, my, my statements echoed from before, like from the beginning of the podcast. I think it's great, but it doesn't realize, it didn't realize how great it was until like, oh, that's what until makes it, it great. Released. They didn't know. Yeah. They yeah. just, they went in there and I still think it's a bunch of. I think they like, thought it was cool. 
Oh, I think that was it, it. I think it was still a bunch of like uh, gym junkies that they, you know, like that had an ego and they threw them into a, like a jungle and they're like, cool, mm. film them for a while. You know, like <laughs> that. that's kind of like, obviously there's way more to that, but I think that's, there's something that's like ridiculous and fun about that. Yeah. And it's, and it's kind of like, it reminds me a little bit of Tropic Thunder and I imagine they were probably but, paying out. That, yeah, that period. is Tropic Thunder. That yeah. is exactly what they're paying off. And I think it's, it's kind of hilarious in that way. And maybe that's the only way to do that kind of thing with that kind of awareness now. Mm. Yeah, we just need another like Tommy Wiseau style. Well, that's no, part of we the don't pleasure. There's no self awareness in the making of Predator. I don't think mm. like most of these winks aren't intentional. No, every that's now right. and then there are ones, but yeah, and they could have been written in script. I, 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 they were writing like they. It was it was a film for a simple audience. The mm. film was written for the lowest common denominator. I think Mad Max is the closest that it can come to, like, because like that that movie is littered with interesting information and and metaphor and context, but none of it's told to you. It's just kind no. of shown. It's there for you, and it would have been written on pages of pages of like of script notes, and then and then like played out as this like oh just some, like cool action yeah. cool stunts. There's no the year is 1980. <laughs> there is a conflict in <laughs> South America that must be stopped. The CIA send their best men. Oh my yeah, God. yeah. Predator 2 actually has an opening crawl like that. Predator uh, 2 has an oh, The heat of the LA riots. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh exactly. my God. Anyway, Things are getting bad, but they'll get worse. Predator 2, starring Danny Glover. You do that voice for Who's really. too old for this shit. Bill Paxton. His game is well and truly over. Well, thank you very much for putting. Yeah, welcome, Piat. <laughs> and you're welcome for improving your voice now. You should always speak to me like that from here on in. Will do. Roger that. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for watching. <laughs> watching? Oh, the movie. Right. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> Love you. So that's the podcast for today. Stay tuned as there will be a new episode released every single Thursday. And to keep up to date, don't forget to subscribe using Podbean or wherever you get your podcasts. On this episode, I want to give a shout out to Stu and Ian for coming onto the show and being freaking amazing. And I hope they come back again. This podcast was produced and edited by me, Piotr Wasilewski, and the music was sourced from the Filmstro website. Till next week. Thanks for listening.